chapter three thirty seven of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how pantagruel persuaded panurge to take counsel of a fool when pantagruel had withdrawn himself he by a little sloping window in one of the galleries perceived panurge in a lobby not far from thence walking alone with the gesture carriage and garb of a fond dotard raving wagging and shaking his hands dandling lolling and nodding with his head like a cow bellowing for her calf and having then called him nearer spoke unto him thus you are at this present as i think not unlike to a mouse entangled in a snare who the more that she goeth about to rid and unwind herself out of the gin wherein she is caught by endeavouring to clear and deliver her feet from the pitch whereto they stick the foulier she is bewrayed with it and the more strongly pestered therein even so is it with you for the more that you labour strive and enforce yourself to disencumber and extricate your thoughts out of the implicating involutions and fetterings of the grievous and lamentable gins and springs of anguish and perplexity the greater difficulty there is in the relieving of you and you remain faster bound than ever nor do i know for the removal of this inconveniency any remedy but one take heed i have often heard it said in a vulgar proverb the wise may be instructed by a fool seeing the answers and responses of sage and judicious men have in no manner of way satisfied you take advice of some fool and possibly by so doing you may come to get that counsel which will be agreeable to your own heart's desire and contentment you know how by the advice and counsel and prediction of fools many kings princes states and commonwealths have been preserved several battles gained and divers doubts of a most perplexed intricacy resolved i am not so diffident of your memory as to hold it needful to refresh it with a quotation of examples nor do i so far undervalue your judgment but that i think it will acquiesce in the reason of this my subsequent discourse as he who narrowly takes heed to what concerns the dexterous management of his private affairs domestic businesses and those adieus which are confined within the straight-laced compass of one family who is attentive vigilant and active in the economic rule of his own house whose frugal spirit never strays from home who loseth no occasion whereby he may purchase to himself more riches and build up new heaps of treasure on his former wealth and who knows warily how to prevent the inconveniences of poverty is called a worldly wise man though perhaps in the second judgment of the intelligences which are above he be esteemed a fool so on the contrary is he most like even in the thoughts of all celestial spirits to be not only sage but to presage events to come by divine inspiration who laying quite aside those cares which are conducible to his body or his fortunes and as it were departing from himself rids all his senses of terrene affections and clears his fancies of those plodding studies which harbour in the minds of thriving men all which neglects of sublunary things are vulgarly imputed folly after this manner the son of picus king of the latins the great soothsayer faunus was called fatuous by the witless rabble of the common people the like we daily see practised amongst the comic players whose dramatic roles in distribution of the personages appoint the acting of the fool to him who is the wisest of the truth in approbation also of this fashion the mathematicians allow the very same horoscope to princes and to sots 
whereof a right pregnant instance by them is given in the nativities of aeneas and corebus the latter of which too is by euphorion said to have been a fool and yet had with the former the same aspects and heavenly tenethriate influences i shall not i suppose swerve much from the purpose in hand if i relate unto you what john andrew said upon the return of a papal writ which was directed to the mayor and burgesses of rochelle and after him by panorn upon the same pontifical canon barbatius on the pandex and recently by jason in his counsels concerning seni john the noted fool of paris and calais for great-grandfather the case is this at paris in the roast-meat cookery of the petit chatelet before the cook-shop of one of the roast-meat sellers of that lane a certain hungry porter was eating his bread after he had by parcels kept it a while above the reek and steam of a fat goose on the spit turning at a great fire and found it so besmoked with the vapour to be savoury which the cook observing took no notice till after having rathined his penny loaf whereof no morsel had been unsmokeified he was about decamping and going away but by your leave as the fellow thought to have departed thence shot free the master cook laid hold upon him by the gorget and demanded payment for the smoke of his roast meat the porter answered that he had sustained no loss at all that by what he had done there was no diminution made of the flesh that he had taken nothing of his and that therefore he was not indebted to him in anything as for the smoking question that although he had not been there it would howsoever have been evaporated besides that before that time it had never been seen nor heard that roast meat smoke was sold upon the streets of paris the cook hereto replied that he was not obliged nor any way bound to feed and nourish for naught a porter whom he had never seen before with the smoke of his roast meat and thereupon swore that if he would not forthwith content and satisfy him with present payment for the repast which he had thereby got that he would take his crooked staves from off his back which instead of having loads thereafter laid upon them should serve for fuel to his kitchen fires whilst he was going about so to do to have pulled them to him by one of the bottom rungs which he had caught in his hand the sturdy porter got out of his grip drew forth the knotty cudgel and stood to his own defence the altercation waxed hot in words which moved the gaping hoydens of the sottish parisians to run from all parts thereabouts to see what the issue would be of that babbling strife and contention in the interim of this dispute to very good purpose saini john the fool and citizen of paris happened to be there whom the cook perceiving said to the porter wilt thou refer and submit unto the noble saini john the decision of the difference and controversy which is betwixt us yes by the blood of a goose answered the porter i am content saini john the fool finding that the cook and porter had compromised the determination of their variance and debate to the discretion of his award in arbitrament after that the reasons on either side whereupon was grounded the mutual fierceness of their brawling jar had been to the full displayed and laid open before him commanded the porter to draw out of the fob of his belt a piece of money if he had it whereupon the porter immediately without delay in reverence to the authority of such a judicious umpire put the tenth part of a silver fillip into his hand this little fillip saini john took then set it on his left shoulder to try by feeling if it was of sufficient weight after that laying it on the palm of his hand he made it ring and tingle to understand by the ear if it was of a good alloy in the metal whereof it was composed thereafter he put it to the ball or apple of his left eye to explore by the sight if it was well stamped and marked all which being done in a profound silence of the whole doltish people who were there spectators of this pageantry to the great hope of the cooks and despair of the porter's prevalency in the suit that was in agitation he finally caused the porter to make it sound several times upon the stall of the cook's shop then with a presidential majesty holding his bauble sceptre-like in his hand muffling his head with a hood of martin skins each side whereof had the resemblance 
of an ape's face crucified up with ears of paste of paper and having about his neck a buffed ruff raised furred and ridged with pointing sticks of the shape and fashion of small organ pipes he first with all the force of his lungs coughed two or three times and then with an audible voice pronounced this following sentence the court declareth that the porter who ate his bread at the smoke of the roast hath civilly paid the cook with the sound of his money and the said court adaineth that every one return to his own home and attend his proper business without cost and charges and for a cause this verdict award in a arbitrament of the parisian fool did appear so equitable yea so admirable to the aforesaid doctors that they very much doubted if the matter had been brought before the sessions for justice of the said place or that the judges of the rota at rome had been umpires therein or yet that the areopagites themselves had been the deciders thereof if by any one part or all of them together it had been so judicially sententiated and awarded therefore advise if you will be counselled by a fool End of chapter three thirty seven chapter three thirty eight of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how triboulet is set forth and blazed by pantagruel and panurge by my soul quoth panurge that overture pleaseth me exceedingly well i will therefore lay hold thereon and embrace it at the very motioning thereof my very right entrail seemeth to be widened and enlarged which was but just now hard bound contracted and costive but as we have hitherto made choice of the purest and most refined cream of wisdom and sapience for our counsel so would i now have to preside and bear the prime sway in our consultation as very a fool in the supreme degree triboulet quoth panagruel is completely foolish as i conceive yes truly answered panurge he is properly and totally a fool a uh, pantagruel fatal fool natural fool celestial fool erratic fool eccentric fool ethereal and junonian fool arctic fool heroic fool genial fool inconstant fool earthly fool salacious and sporting fool jocund and wanton fool pimpled fool freckled fool bell tinging fool laughing and lecherous fool nimming and filching fool unpressed fool first broached fool augustal fool caesarine fool imperial fool royal fool patriarchal fool original fool loyal fool episcopal fool doctoral fool monarchal fool fiscal fool extravagant fool writhed fool canonical fool such another fool graduated fool commensal fool primo licentiated fool train-bearing fool supererogating fool collateral fool haunch and side fool nestling ninny and youngling fool flitting giddy and unsteady fool brancher novice and cockney fool haggard cross and froward fool gentle mild and tractable fool mail-coated fool pilfering and purloining fool tail-grown fool grey-peckled fool pleonasmical fool capital fool hair-brained fool cordial fool intimate fool hepatic fool cup shotten and swilling fool splenetic fool windy fool legitimate fool as nathal fool al macantarized fool proportioned fool genified fool swollen and puffed up fool over cock rifled and lifted fool cora lorry fool eastern fool sublime fool crimson fool ingrained fool city fool basely incoutred fool mastheaded fool modal fool second notial fool cheerful and buxom fool solemn fool annual fool festival fool recreative fool boorish and counterfeit fool pleasant fool privileged fool rustical fool proper and peculiar fool ever ready fool diapasonal fool resolute fool hieroglyphical fool authentic fool worthy fool precious fool fanatic fool fantastical fool 
symphatic fool panic fool limbecked and distilled fool comfortable fool wretched and heartless fool fooded fool thick and threefold fool damask fool fearney fool unleavened fool baritonant fool pink and spot powdered fool musket proof fool pedantic fool strouting fool wood fool greedy fool senseless fool goderlick fool obstinate fool contradictory fool pedagogical fool craft fool drunken fool peevish fool prodigal fool rash fool plotting fool panurge jovial fool mercurial fool lunatic fool ducal fool common fool lordly fool palatine fool principal fool praetorian fool elected fool courtly fool primi polari fool triumphant fool vulgar fool domestic fool exemplary fool rare outlandish fool say trapple fool civil fool popular fool familiar fool notable fool favorized fool latinized fool ordinary fool transcendent fool rising fool papal fool consistorian fool conclavist fool bullist fool synodal fool doting and raving fool singular and surpassing fool special and excelling fool metaphysical fool scatical fool predicamental and categoric fool predicable and enunciatory fool decumane and superlative fool dutiful and officious fool optical and perspective fool algoristic fool algebraical fool cabalistical and mesoretical fool talmudical fool algamalized fool compendious fool abbreviated fool hyperbolical fool anatomastical fool allegorical fool tropological fool micropincrust fool heteroclit fool summist fool abridging fool moorish fool leaden sealed fool mandatory fool compassionate fool titillary fool crouching shouking ducking fool grim stern harsh and wayward fool well hung and timbered fool ill clawed pounced and pawed fool well stoned fool crabbed and unpleasing fool winded and untainted fool kinchin haunting fool lofty and stately fool spit rack fool architrave fool pedestal fool tetragonal fool renowned fool rheumatic fool flaunting and braggadocio fool egregious fool humorous and capricious fool rude gross and absurd fool large measured fool babel fool downright fool broad listed fool duncical bearing fool stale and overworn fool saucy and swaggering fool fool balked fool gallant and vainglorious fool gorgeous and gaudy fool continual and intermitting fool rebasing and roundling fool prototypal and precedenting fool prating fool catechetic fool cacodoxical fool meridiano fool nocturnal fool occidental fool trifling fool astrological and figure flinging fool genethalaic and horoscopal fool knavish fool idiot fool blockish fool beetle-headed fool grotesque fool impertinent fool quarrelsome fool unmannerly fool captious and sophistical fool seritic fool catholoproton fool hodi and diodi fool alphos and catati fool Banagruel, if there was any reason why at rome and quirinal holiday of old was called the feast of fools i know not why we may not for the like cause institute in france the tribuletic festivals to be celebrated and solemnized over all the land panurge if all fools carried cruppers pantagruel if he were the god fatuous of whom we have already made mention the husband of the goddess fatua his father would be good day and his grandmother good even panurge if all fools paced albeit he be somewhat wry-legged he would overlay at least a fathom at every rake let us go toward him without any further lingering or delay we shall have no doubt some fine resolution of him i am ready to go and long for the issue of our progress impatiently i must needs quoth pantagruel according to my former resolution therein be present at bridal goose's trial nevertheless whilst i shall be upon my journey towards myrlings which is on the other side of the river of loire i will dispatch carpelin to bring along with him from blois the fool triboulet then was carpelin instantly sent away and pantagruel at the same time attended by his domestics panurge epistemon panocrates friar john gymnast rizzo thomas and others marched forward on the high road to myrlings End of chapter 338chapter three thirty nine of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais 
this librivox recording is in the public domain how pantagruel was present at the trial of judge bridal goose who decided causes and controversies in law by the chance and fortune of the dice on the day following precisely at the hour appointed pantagruel came to marling's at his arrival the presidents senators and councillors prayed him to do them the honour to enter in with them to hear the decision of all the causes arguments and reasons which bridal goose in his own defence would produce why he had pronounced a certain sentence against the subsidy assessor to charonde which did not seem very equitable to that centum viral court pantagruel very willingly condescended to their desire and accordingly entering in found bridal goose sitting within the middle of the enclosure of the said court of justice who immediately upon the coming of pantagruel accompanied with the senatorian members of that worshipful judicatory arose went to the bar had his indictment read and for all his reasons defences and excuses answered nothing else but that he was become old and that his sight of late was very much failed and become dimmer than it was wont to be instancing therewithal many miseries and calamities which old age bringeth along with it and are concomitant to wrinkled elders which not per archid d eighty six c tanta by reason of which infirmity he was not able so distinctly and clearly to discern the points and blots of the dice as formerly he had been accustomed to do whence it might very well have happened said he as old dim-sighted isaac took jacob for esau that i after the same manner at the decision of causes and controversies in law should have been mistaken in taking a quatre for a sank or a tray for a deuce this i beseech your worships quoth he to take into your serious consideration and to have the more favourable opinion of my uprightness notwithstanding the prevarication whereof i am accused in the matter of two charons sentence that at the time of that decree's pronouncing i only had made use of my small dice and your worship said he know very well how by the most authentic rules of the law it is provided that the imperfections of nature should never be imputed unto any for crimes and transgressions as appeareth following de re millet one qui cum uno following de reg jure one fair following de idol edict per totem following de term mode one divus adrianus resolved by lud ram in one c vero following sol matra and who would offer to do otherwise should not thereby accuse the man but nature and the all-seeing providence of god as is evident in one maximum witium c de lib praetor what kind of dice quoth trinquimel grand president of the said court do you mean my friend bridal goose the dice quoth bridal goose of sentences at law decrees and peremptory judgments alea judiciorum whereof is written per doct twenty six que two cap sort one neck emptio following de contrahend empt one quod debitur following de pocol et ibi bartol in which your worships do as well as i use in this glorious sovereign court of yours so do all other righteous judges in their decision of processes and final determination of legal differences observing that which hath been said thereof by d henri ferrandat et not gla in c 
fin de sortil et one set cum ambo following de jude ubi docto mart that chance and fortune are good honest profitable and necessary for ending of and putting a final closure to dissensions and debates in suits at law the same hath more clearly been declared by bald bartol et alex c communia de leg one c duo but how is it that you do these things asked trinquemel i very briefly quoth bridal goose shall answer you according to the doctrine and instructions of leg ampliorum para in refutati aureus c de appel which is conformed to what is said in class one one following quod met causa gaudent brevitata moderni my practice is therein the same with that of your other worships and as the custom of the judicatory requires unto which our law commandeth us to have regard and by the rule thereof still to direct and regulate our actions and procedures ut not extra de consuet in c si ex literis et ibi enoc for having well and exactly seen surveyed overlooked reviewed recognized read and read over again turned and tossed over seriously perused and examined the bills of complaint accusations impeachments indictments warnings citations summonings capparitions appearances mandates commissions delegations instructions informations inquests preparatories productions evidences proofs allegations depositions cross speeches contradictions supplications requests petitions inquiries instruments of the deposition of witnesses rejoinders replies confirmations of former assertions do please trip please answers to rejoinders writings deeds reproaches disabling of exception taken grievances salvation bills re-examination of witnesses confronting of them together declarations denunciations libels certificates royal missives letters of appeal letters of attorney instruments of compulsion delineatories anticipatories evocations messages demissions issues exceptions dilatory pleas demurs compositions injunctions reliefs reports returns confessions acknowledgments exploits executions and other such like confects and spiceries both at the one and the other side as a good judge ought to do conform to what hath been noted thereupon spec de ordination paragraph three et tit de ofi om jud paragra fin et de rescriptus presentat paragraph one i posit on the end of a table in my closet all the pokes and bags of the defendant and then allow unto him the first hazard of the dice according to the usual manner of your other worships and it is mentioned one favorabiliaris following de reg jur et in cap cum sunt iod tit lib six which saith quum sunt partium jura obscura reo podius favendum est quam actori that being done i thereafter lay down upon the other end of the same table the bags and satchels of the plaintiff as your other worships are accustomed to do with some wisu just over against one another for opposita juxta se posita querius e luscunt ut not in lib one perg vidiamus following the his qui sunt sui vel aliani juris et in one munerum para mixta following de mun et on then do i likewise insemblably throw the dice for him and forthwith liver him his chance but quoth trinquamel my friend how come you to know understand and resolve the obscurity of these various and seeming contrary passages in law which are laid claim to by the suitors and pleading parties even just quoth bridal goose after the fashion of your other worships to wit when there are many bags on the one side and on the other i then use my little small dice after the customary manner of your other worships in obedience to the law semper in stipulati onibus following de reg jur and the law versified versifieth that eotit semper in obscurus quod minimum est sequimur canonized in c in obscurus iod tit lib six i have other large great dice fair and goodly ones which i employ in the fashion that your other worships used to do when the matter is more plain clear and liquid that is to say when there are fewer bags 
but when you have done all these fine things quoth trincomel how do you my friend award decrees and pronounce judgment even as your other worships answered bridal goose for i give out sentence in his favour unto whom hath befallen the best chance by dice judiciary tribunium praetorial what comes first so are laws to man following qui pot in pin one creditor si de consul one et de regulger in six qui prior est tempore por ti or est jure end of chapter three thirty nine chapter three forty of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how bridal goose giveth reasons why he looked upon those law actions which he decided by the chance of the dice yea but quoth trinquamel my friend seeing it is by the lot chance and throw of the dice that you award your judgments and sentences why do not you liver up these fair throws and chances the very same day and hour without any further procrastination or delay that the controverting party pleaders appear before you to what use can those writings serve you those papers and other procedures contained in the bags and pokes of the law suitors to the very same use quoth bridal goose that they serve your other worships they are behooveful unto me and serve my turn in three things very exquisite requisite and authentical first for formality sake the omission whereof that it maketh all whatever is done to be of no force nor value is excellently well proved by spec one tit de instra edit et tit de rescript present besides that it is not unknown to you who have had many more experiments thereof than i how oftentimes in judicial proceedings the formalities utterly destroy the materialities and substances of the causes and matters agitated for forma mutata mutatur substantia following ad exip one julianus following ad leg fall one c is qui quadraginta et extra de decum c ad audientiam et de celebrat nis c in quantum secondly they are useful and steadable to me even as unto your other worships in lieu of some other honest and healthful exercise the late master othamon vadet vaderi a prime physician as you would say code comet et archi lib twelve hath frequently told me that the lack and default of bodily exercise is the chief if not the sole and only cause of the little health and short lives of all officers of justice such as your worships and i am which observation was singularly well before him noted and remarked by bartholus in lib one c de sent quae pro eo quod therefore it is that the practice of such like exercitations is appointed to be laid hold on by your other worships and consequently not to be denied unto me who am of the same profession quia accessorium naturum sequitur principalis de reg jur one sixth et one cum principalis et one nihil dolo following a ad tit following de fide de juice one fide de juice et extra de officio del leg cap one let certain honest and recreative sports and plays of corporeal exercises be allowed and approved of and so far following de alos et aliat one solent et authent ut omnis abed in prink cal seven et following de prescript verb one c gratu tam et one one code de spec one two such also is the opinion of d tam in secunda secundi q one one sixty eight 
quoted in very good purpose by d albert de rosa who fuit magnus practicus and a solemn doctor his barbatius attesteth in principius consul wherefore the reason is evidently and clearly deduced and set down before us in gloss in pruemio following par ne autum tertii iter pone tuis in tertum gaudia curis in very deed once in the year a thousand four hundred fourscore and ninth having a business concerning the portion and inheritance of a younger brother depending in the court and chamber of the four high treasures of france whereinto as soon as ever i got leave to enter by a pecuniary permission of the usher thereof as your other worships know very well that pecuniae obedient omnia and there says baldus in one singularia following c sir pet et salic in one recititia code de constit pecuni et card in clem one day baptism i found them all recreating and diverting themselves at the play called mus either before or after dinner to me truly it is a thing altogether indifferent whether of the two it was provided that the hic not that the game of the mus is honest healthful ancient and lawful a musco inventori de quo card de pedit hired one c post mortem et muscaria such as play and sport it at the mus are excusable in and by law lib one c de excuse artific lib ten and at the very same time was master tealman piquet one of the players of that game of mus there is nothing that i do better remember for he laughed heartily when his fellow-members of the aforesaid judicial chamber spoiled their caps in swinging of their shoulders he nevertheless did even then say unto them that the banging and flapping of him to the waist and havoc of their caps should not at their return from the palace to their own houses excuse them from their wives per si extra de praesumpt et ibi gloss now resolutori lequenda i should say according to the style and phrase of your other worships that there is no exercise sport game play nor recreation in all this palatine palatial or parliamentary world more aromatizing and fragrant than to empty and void bags and purses turn over papers and writings quote margins and backs of scrolls and rolls fill panniers and take the inspection of causes ex bart et joan de pra in one false de condit et de monst following thirdly i consider as your own worships used to do that time ripeneth and bringeth all things to maturity that by time everything cometh to be made manifest and patent and that time is the father of truth and virtue gloss in one one cod de servit authent de restit et ea quae pa et spec tit de requisit cons therefore is it that after the manner and fashion of your other worships i defer protract delay prolong intermit surcease pause linger suspend prorogate drive out wire draw and shift off the time of giving a definitive sentence to the end that the suit or process being well fanned and winnowed tossed and canvassed to and fro narrowly precisely and nearly garbled sifted searched and examined and on all hands exactly argued disputed and debated may by succession of time come at last to its full ripeness and maturity by means whereof when the fatal hazard of the dice ensueth thereupon the, the parties cast or condemned by the said aleatory chance will with much greater patience and more mildly and gently endure and bear up the disastrous load of their misfortune than if they had been sentenced at their first arrival unto the court as not gla following de excus tut one tria onera por tatur lari te quod portat quisque libentur on the other part to pass a decree or sentence when the action is raw crude green unripe unprepared as at the beginning a danger would ensue of a no less inconveniency than that which the physicians have been wont to say befalleth to him in whom an imposthume is pierced before it be ripe or unto any other whose body is purged of a strong predominating humour before its digestion for as it is written in authent haec constit in inoc de constit princip so is the same repeated in gloss in c caeterum ex in c caeterum extra de urum calum quod medicamenta morbus exhibit hoc jura negotius nature furthermore admonisheth and teaches us to gather and reap eat and feed on fruits when they are ripe and not before instit de rare div paragra is ad quem et 
following day action empt one julianus to marry likewise our daughters when they are ripe and no sooner following day donatio inter vir et exor et one cum hic status peregre et si quis sponsum et twenty seven qua one c sicut dicit gla yam mature thorough planus a do laveret anus virginitis and in a word she instructeth us to do nothing of any considerable importance but in a full maturity and ripeness twenty three q para ult et twenty three de c ultimo end of chapter three forty chapter three forty one of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how bridal goose relateth the history of the reconcilers of parties at variance in matters of law i remember to the same purpose quoth bridal goose in continuing his discourse that in the time when at Proctier i was a student of law under brocadium juris there was at semerve one peter danden a very honest man careful labourer of the ground fine singer in a church desk of good repute and credit and older than the most aged of all your worships who was wont to say that he had seen the great and goodly good man the council of lateran with his wide and broad-brimmed red hat as also that he had beheld and looked upon the fair and beautiful pragmatical sanction his wife with her huge rosary or paternotrian chaplet of jet beads hanging at a large sky-coloured ribbon this honest man compounded atoned and agreed more differences controversies and variances at law than had been determined voided and finished during his time in the whole palace of Parctier, in the auditory of montmarillon and in the town-house of the old Paritanay. this amicable disposition of his rendered him venerable and of great estimation sway power and authority throughout all the neighbouring places of charbonny noyer laguge devant maisot estable and other bordering and circumjacent towns villages and hamlets all their debates were pacified by him he put an end to their brabbling suits at law and wrangling differences by his advice and counsels were accords and reconcilements no less firmly made than if the verdict of a sovereign judge had been interposed therein although in very deed he was no judge at all but a right honest man as you may well conceive argin one said si unius following de jurger et de verbis obligati orius one continuous there was not a hog killed within three parishes of him whereof he had not some part of the hazlet and puddings he was almost every day invited either to a marriage banquet christening feast an uprising or women churching treatment a birthday's anniversary solemnity a merry frolic gossiping or otherwise to some delicious entertainment in a tavern to make some accord and agreement between persons at odds and in debate with one another remark what i say for he never yet settled and compounded a difference betwixt any two at variance but he straight made the parties agreed and pacified to drink together as a sure and infallible token and symbol of a perfect and completely well cemented reconciliation sign of a sound and sincere amity and proper mark of a new joy and gladness to follow thereupon ud not per doct following de peric et com rei wend one one he had a son whose name was to know danden a lusty young sturdy frisking royster so help me god who likewise in imitation of his feast-making father 
would have undertaken and meddled with the making up of variances and deciding of controversies betwixt disagreeing and contentious party pleaders as you know Cypa, solet similis esse patri et sequitur leviter filia matris iter ut eight class six quaest one c c quis logostes cons dist five c two fin est est not per dact cad de improb et alius sub sit one ult et one legitime following the stat home gloss in one quod si non lit following de idil edict one quis quis si ad leg jule majest ex scipio filios ammoniali susceptos ex monaco per gloss in si impudicus twenty seven questione one and such was his confidence to have no worse success than his father he assumed unto himself the title of law strife settler he was likewise in these pacificatory negotiations so active and vigilant for vigilantibus jura subvenient ex one pupillus following quae in fraud cred et ibid one non emin et instit in coem that when he had smelt heard and fully understood ut following si quando pop fec one agasso claus in verb al fecit id est nasum ad colmum pasuit and found that there was anywhere in the country a debatable matter at law he would incontinently thrust in his advice and so forwardly intrude his opinion in the business that he made no bones of making offer and taking upon him to decide it how difficult soever it might happen to be to the full contentment and satisfaction of both parties it is written qui non laborat non manducet and the said gla following de dam in fec one quam vis en curere plu quer le pas ventilam compellit egistus class following de lib agnosc one si quis pro qua facet one si pluris si de cond in scurt but so hugely great was his misfortune in this his undertaking that he never composed any difference how little soever you may imagine it might have been but that instead of reconciling the parties at odds he did incense irritate and exasperate them to a higher point of dissension and enmity than ever they were at before your worships know i doubt not that sermo datur cunctis animi sapientia paucus gla following de alien dub mut caus fa lib tu this administered unto the tavern keepers wine drawers and vintners of some herb an occasion to say that under him they had not in the space of a whole year so much reconciliation wine for so were they pleased to call the good wine of la gouge as under his father they had done in one half hour's time it happened a little while thereafter that he made a most heavy regret thereof to his father attributing the causes of his bad success pacificatory enterprises to the perversity stubbornness froward cross and backward inclinations of the people of his time roundly boldly and irreverently upbraiding that if but a score of years before the world had been so wayward obstinate pervicacious implacable and out of all square frame and order as it was then his father had never attained to and acquired the honour and title of strife appeaser so irregularly inviolably and irrevocably as he had done in doing whereof to know did heinously transgress against the law which prohibiteth children to reproach the actions of their parents peregla et part one three peregra si quis following de cond ab caus et authent de nupt par sed quod sanctum col for to this the honest old father answered thus my son dandon when don oporte taketh place this is the course which he must trace gla si de appel one eos etiam for the road that you went upon was not the way to the fuller's mill nor in any part thereof was the form to be found wherein the hare did sit thou hast not the skill and dexterity of settling and composing differences why because thou takest them at the beginning in the very infancy and bud as it were 
when they are green raw and indigestible yet i know handsomely and featly how to compose and settle them all why because i take them at their decadence and their weaning and when they are pretty well digested so saith gloss ducior est fructus post multa pericula ductus l non moriturus si de contrahend et commit stip didst thou ever hear the vulgar proverb happy is the physician whose coming is desired at the declension of a disease for the sickness being come to a crisis is then upon the decreasing hand and drawing towards an end although the physician should not repair thither for the cure thereof whereby though nature wholly do the work he bears away the palm and prays thereof my pleaders after the same manner before i did interpose my judgment in the reconciling of them were waxing faint in their contestations their altercation heat was much abated and in declining from their former strife they of themselves inclined to affirm accommodation of their differences because their wanted fuel to that fire of burning rancour and despiteful wrangling whereof the lower sort of lawyers were the kindlers that is to say their purses were emptied of coin they had not a win in their fob nor penny in their bag wherewith to solicit and present their actions deficiente pecto deficit omne nia they wanted then nothing but some brother to supply the place of a paranymph brawl broker proxenete or mediator who acting his part dexterously should be the first broacher of the motion of an agreement for saving both the one and the other party from that hurtful and pernicious shame whereof he could not have avoided the imputation when it should have been said that he was the first who yielded and spoke of a reconcilement and that therefore his cause not being good and being sensible where his shoe did pinch him he was willing to break the ice and make the greater haste to prepare the way for a condescendment to an amicable and friendly treaty then was it that i came in pudding time stand in my son nor is the fat of bacon more relishing to boiled peas than was my verdict then agreeable to them this was my luck my profit and good fortune i tell thee my jolly son dandin that by this rule and method i could settle a firm peace or at least clap up a cessation of arms and truce for many years to come betwixt the great king and the venetian state the emperor and the cantons of switzerland the english and the scots and betwixt the pope and the ferrarians shall i go yet further yea as i would have god to help me betwixt the turk and the sophi the tartars and the muscoviters remark well what i am to say unto thee i would take them at the very instant nick of time when both those of the one and the other side should be weary and tired of making war when they had voided and emptied their own caches and coffers of all treasure and coin drained and exhausted the purses and bags of their subjects sold and mortgaged their domains and proper inheritances and totally wasted spent and consumed the munition furniture provision and victuals that were necessary to the continuance of a military expedition there i am sure by god or by his mother that would they would they not in spite of all their teeth they should be forced to have a little respite and breathing time to moderate the fury and cruel rage of their ambitious aims this is the doctrine in gla thirty seven d c c quando o dero si potero si non in vidis amabo end of chapter three forty one chapter three forty two of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how suits at law are bred at first and how they come afterwards to their perfect growth for this cause quoth bridal goose going on in his discourse i temporize and apply myself to the times as your other worships used to do waiting patiently for the maturity of the process full growth and perfection thereof in all its members to wit the writings and the bags argin one c major c common divid et decans d one c solemnitatis et ibicla a suit in law at its production birth and first beginning seemeth to me as unto your other worships shapeless without form or fashion 
incomplete ugly and imperfect even as a bear at his first coming into the world hath neither hands skin hair nor head but is merely an inform rude and ill-favoured piece and lump of flesh and would remain still so if his dam out of the abundance of her affection to her hopeful cub did not with much licking put his members into that figure and shape which nature had provided for those of an arctic and ursinal kind ut not docked falling odd one a quill one three in fan just so do i see as your other worships do processes and suits in law at their first bringing forth to be numberless without shape deformed and disfigured for that then they consist only of one or two writings or copies of instruments through which defect they appear unto me as to your other worships foul loathsome filthy and misshapen beasts but when there are heaps of these legiformal papers packed piles laid up together impoked insatcheled and put in bags then is it that with the good reason we may term that suit to which as pieces parcels parts portions and members thereof they do pertain and belong well formed and fashioned big limbed strong set in all and each of its dimensions most completely membered because forma dot essa rei one c is qui following odd leg falcid in c cum delecta de rescript barbat consul twelve lib to and before him baldus in c ult extra de consuit et one julianus ad exib following et one quaesitum following de leg three the manner is such as is set down in gle per quaest one c paulus debila principium balior fortuna sequitur like your other worships also the sergeants catchpoles pursuivants messengers summoners apparitors ushers doorkeepers pettifoggers attorneys proctors commissioners justices of the peace judge delegates arbitrators overseers sequestrators advocates inquisitors jurors searchers examiners notaries tabellions scribes scriveners clerks preg notaries secondaries and expedient judges de quibus tit est one three c by sacking very much and that exceeding forcibly in licking at the purses of the pleading parties they to the suits already begot and in gendered form fashion and frame head feet claws talons beaks bills teeth hands veins sinews arteries muscles humours and so forth through all the similary and dissimilary parts of the whole which parts particles pentacles and appurtenances are the law pokes and bags gla de cons d for c acceptisti qualis vestis erit talia corda gerit hic notandum est that in this respect the pleaders litigants and law suitors are happier than the officers ministers and administrators of justice for beatius est dari quam acupari following common one three extra de celebra nis si cum mar fi at twenty four quaest one cap od gila affectum dantis pensats kitsur tonatis thus becometh the action or process by their care and industry to be of a complete and goldly bulk well shaped frame formed and fashioned according to the canonical gloss acipe sume cape sunt verba placentia papae which speech hath been more clearly explained by albert de rose in verbo roma roma manus wrote it quis rodere non valet odit dantes custodit non dantes spurnit et audit the reason whereof is thought to be this ad presens owa cross pullis sunt meliora ut escla in one qua um he following de transact nor is this all for the inconvenience of the contrary is set down in gloss c de alla one fin quum labor in domino est crescit mortalis egistus in confirmation whereof we find that the true etymology 
and exposition of the word process as purchase viz of good store of money to the lawyers and of many pokes it est pru sex to the pleaders upon which subject we have most celestial quips jibes and girds ligitando jura criscunt litigando juice aquiritur item gla in cap elude extrem de praesumpt et si de prob one instrum one known epistolus one known nudis et si non prosunt singula multa you want yea but ask trinquamel how do you proceed my friend in criminal causes the culpable and guilty party being taken and seized upon flagrante crimine even as your other worships used to do answered bridled goose first i permit the plaintiff to depart from the court enjoining him not to presume to return thither till he pre alibly should have taken a good sound and profound sleep which is to serve for the prime entry and introduction to the legal carrying on of the business in the next place a formal report is to be made to me of his having slept thirdly i issue forth a warrant to convene him before me fourthly he is to produce a sufficient and authentic attestation of his having thoroughly and entirely slept conform to the gloss thirty seven quest seven c c quis cum quando que bonus dormitat homeris being thus far advanced in the formality of the process i find that this consopiating act engendereth another act whence ariseth the articulating of a member that again produceth a third act fashionative of another member which third bringing forth a fourth procreative of another act new members in a no fewer number are shapen and framed one still breeding and beginning another as link after link the coat of mail at length is made till thus piece after piece by little and little by information upon information the process be completely well formed and perfect in all its members finally having proceeded this length i have recourse to my dice nor is it to be thought that this interruption respite or interpolation is by me occasioned without very good reason inducing me thereunto and a notable experience of a most convincing and irrefragable force i remember on a time that in the camp at stockholm there was a certain gascon named gratiano native of the town of st sever who having lost all his money at play and consecutively being very angry thereat as you know pecunia est alter sanguis ut ait anto de bertio in c si acadens tu extra ut lit non contest et bald in one c si tuis c si de opt leg per tot in one advocati c si de advoc div jude pecunia est vita hominis et optimis fide jusor in ne citatibus did at his coming forth of the gaming-house in the presence of the whole company that was there with a very loud voice speak in his own language these following words pau cap de bias hillet qui max de peeps bus trespire arisque de purgudis sont le mirs binct et quatre bagnels ta pla donarien pix trucks and paddocks se de gun de bus aux qui bull trucker amb io abel's embus finding that none would make him any answer he passed from thence to that part of the leaguer where the huff snuff hunter sponder swashbuckling high germans were to whom he renewed these very terms provoking them to fight with him but all the return he had from them to his stout challenge was only der gasconer thut sick aus mit ein item zu schlagen hiber ist geneigter zu stellen derem lieber frauen habt sorg zu arum haus wrath finding also that none of that band of teutonic soldiers offered himself to the combat he passed to that quarter of the leaguer where the french freebooting adventurers were encamped and reiterating unto them what he had before repeated to the dutch warriors challenged them likewise to fight with him and therewithal made some pretty little gascon nato frisking gambles to oblige them the more cheerfully and gallantly to cope with him in the list of a dualizing engagement but no answer at all was made unto him whereupon the gascon despairing of meeting with any antagonist departed from thence and laying himself down not far from the pavilions of the grand christian cavalier crissy fell fast asleep when he had thoroughly slept an hour or two another adventurous and all hazarding blade of the forlorn hope of the lavishingly wasting gamesters having also lost all his money sallied forth with sword in his hand of a firm resolution to fight 
with his four said gascon seeing he had lost as well as he ploa tour lacrimis amissa pecunia veris saith the gla de poenitent distinct three seas sunt plurus to this effect having made inquiry and searched for him throughout the whole camp and in sequel thereof found him asleep he said unto him up ho good fellow in the name of all the devils of hell rise up rise up get up i have lost my money as well as thou hast done let us therefore go fight lustily together grapple and scuffle it to some purpose thou mayest look and see that my tuck is no longer than thy rapier the gascon altogether astonished at his unexpected provocation without altering his former dialect spoke thus cap de santano quo says to you qui me rebellas qui mon de tabern ti gaire go saint siav cap de gascon ta pla dormi ju guan aquoes to gain me bingit esti the venturous royster inviteth him again to the duel but the gascon without condescending to his desire said only this he pavre ju tes guineri ares cur son pla reposit fain and paqua te passer cum ju pus true caren thus in forgetting his loss he forgot the eagerness which he had to fight in conclusion after that the other had likewise slept a little they instead of fighting and possibly killing one another went jointly to a subtler's tent where they drank together very amicably each upon the pawn of his sword thus by a little sleep was pacified the ardent fury of two warlike champions there gossip comes the golden word of john adra in cap ut descent et re judic one sexto sedendo et dormiendo fit anima pudens end of chapter three forty two chapter three forty three this librivox recording is in the public domain how pantagruel excuseth bridal goose in the matter of sentencing actions at law by the chance of the dice with this bridal goose held his peace whereupon trinquemel bid him withdraw from the court which accordingly was done and then directed his discourse to pantagruel after this manner it is fitting most illustrious prince not only by reason of the deep obligations wherein this present parliament together with the whole marquisate of mara lings stand bound to your royal highness for the innumerable benefits which as effects of mere grace they have received from your incomparable bounty but for that excellent wit also prime judgment and admirable learning wherewith almighty god the giver of all good things hath most richly qualified and endowed you we tender and present unto you the decision of this new strange and paradoxical case of bridal goose who in your presence to your both hearing and seeing hath plainly confessed his final judging and determinating of suits of law by the mere chance and fortune of the dice therefore do we beseech you that you may be pleased to give sentence therein as unto you shall seem most just and equitable to this pantagruel answered gentlemen it is not unknown to you how my condition is somewhat remote from the profession of deciding law controversies yet seeing you are pleased to do me the honour to put that task upon me instead of undergoing the office of a judge i will become your humble supplicant i observe gentlemen in this bridal goose several things which induce me to represent before you that it is my opinion he should be pardoned in the first place his old age secondly his simplicity to both which qualities our statute and common laws civil and municipal together allow many excuses for any slips or escapes which through the invincible imperfection of either have been inconsiderately stumbled upon by a person so qualified thirdly gentlemen i must needs display before you another case which in equity and justice maketh much for the advantage of bridal goose to wit that this one sole and single fault of his ought to be quite forgotten abolished and swallowed up by that immense and vast ocean of just dooms and sentences which heretofore he hath given and pronounced his demeanours for these forty years and upwards that he hath been a judge having been 
so evenly balanced in the scales of uprightness that envy itself till now could not have been so impudent as to accuse and twit him with any act worthy of a check or reprehension as if a drop of the sea were thrown into the loire none could perceive or say that by this single drop the whole river should be salt and brackish truly it seemeth unto me that in the whole series of bridal gooses juridical decrees there hath been i know not what of extraordinary savouring of the unspeakable benignity of god that all those in his preceding sentences awards and judgments have been confirmed and approved of by yourselves in this your own venerable and sovereign court for it is usual as you know well with him whose ways are inscrutable to manifest his own ineffable glory in blunting the perspicacy of the eyes of the wise in weakening the strength of potent oppressors and depressing the pride of rich extortioners and in erecting comforting protecting supporting upholding and shoring up the poor feeble humble silly and foolish ones of the earth but waiving all these matters i shall only beseech you not by the obligations which you pretend to owe to my family for which i thank you but for that constant and unfeigned love and affection which you have always found in me both on this and on the other side of loire for the maintenance and establishment of your places offices and dignities that for this one time you would pardon and forgive him upon these two conditions first that he satisfy or put a sufficient surety for the satisfaction of the party wronged by the injustice of the sentence in question for the fulfilment of this article i will provide sufficiently and secondly that for his subsidiary aid in the weighty charge of administering justice you would be pleased to appoint and assign unto him some pretty little virtuous counsellor younger learneder and wiser than he by the square and rule of whose advice he may regulate guide temper and moderate in times coming all his judiciary procedures for otherwise if you intend totally to depose him from his office and to deprive him altogether of the state and dignity of a judge i shall cordially entreat you to make a present and free gift of him to me who shall find in my kingdom's charges and employments enough wherewith to embusy him for the bettering of his own fortunes and furtherance of my service in the meantime i implore the creator saviour and sanctifier of all good things in his grace mercy and kindness to preserve you all now and evermore world without end these words thus spoken pantagruel veiling his cap and making a leg with such a majestic garb as became a person of his paramount degree and eminency farewelled trincomel the president and master speaker of the marlingesian parliament took his leave of the whole court and went out of the chamber at the door where of finding panurge epistemon friar john and others he forthwith attended by them walked to the outer gate where all of them immediately took horse to return towards gargantua pantagruel by the way related to them from point to point the manner of bridal gooses sententiating differences at law friar john said that he had seen peter dandin and was acquainted with him at that time when he sojourned in the monastery of fontaine le camp under the noble abbot ardillon gymnast likewise affirmed that he was in the tent of the grand christian cavalier de crecy when the gascon after his sleep made answer to the adventurer panurge was somewhat incredulous in the matter of believing that it was morally possible bridal goose should have been for such a long space of time so continually fortunate in that aleatory way of deciding law debates pistamon said to pantagruel such another story not much unlike to that in all the circumstances thereof is vulgarly reported of the provost of montherry in good sooth such a perpetuity of good luck is to be wondered at to have hit right twice or thrice in a judgment so given by haphazard might have fallen out well enough especially in controversies that were ambiguous intricate abstruse perplexed and obscure End of chapter three forty three chapter three forty four of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how pantagruel relateth a strange history of the perplexity of human judgment seeing you talk quoth pantagruel of dark difficult hard and knotty debates 
i will tell you of one controverted before Nius dolabella proconsul in asia the case was this a wife in smyrna had of her first husband a child named abisi he dying she after the expiring of a year and day married again and to her second husband bore a boy called Ephigi. a pretty long time thereafter it happened as you know the affection of stepfathers and stepdams is very rare towards the children of the first fathers and mothers deceased that this husband with the help of his son Ephigi, secretly wittingly willingly and treacherously murdered abisi the woman came no sooner to get information of the fact but that it might not go unpunished she caused to kill them both to revenge the death of her first son she was apprehended and carried before nias dolabella in whose presence she without dissembling anything confessed all that was laid to her charge yet alleged that she had both right and reason on her side for the killing of them thus was the state of the question he found the business so dubious and intricate that he knew not what to determine therein nor which of the parties to incline to on the one hand it was an execrable crime to cut off at once both her second husband and her son on the other hand the cause of the murder seemed to be so natural as to be grounded upon the law of nations and the rational instinct of all the people of the world seeing they two together had feloniously and murderously destroyed her first son not that they had been in any manner of way wronged outraged or injured by him but out of an avaricious intent to possess his inheritance in this doubtful quandary and uncertainty what to pitch upon he sent to the areopagites then sitting at athens to learn and obtain their advice and judgment that judicious senate very sagely perpending the reasons of his perplexity sent him word to summon her personally to compare before him a precise hundred years thereafter to answer to some interrogatories touching certain points which were not contained in the verbal defence which resolution of theirs did import that it was in their opinion a so difficult and inextricable matter that they knew not what to say or judge therein who had decided that plea by the chance and fortune of the dice could not have erred nor awarded a miss on which side soever he had passed his casting and condemnatory sentence if against the woman she deserved punishment for usurping sovereign authority by taking that vengeance at her own hand the inflicting whereof was only competent to the supreme power to administer justice in criminal cases if for her the just resentment of a so atrocious injury done unto her in murdering her innocent son did fully excuse and vindicate her of any trespass or offence about that particular committed by her but this continuation of bridal goose for so many years still hitting the nail on the head never missing the mark and always judging aright by the mere throwing of the dice and chance thereof is that which most astonisheth and amazeth me to answer quoth pantagruel epistemon says the english edition of sixteen ninety four following the reading of the modern french editions le duchat has pointed out the mistake m categorically to that which you wonder at i must ingeniously confess and avow but i cannot yet conjecturally to guess at the reason of it i would refer the cause of that marvellously long continued happy success in the judiciary results of his definitive sentences to the favourable aspect of the heavens and benignity of the intelligences who out of their love to goodness after having contemplated the pure simplicity and sincere and faintedness of judge bridalgoose in the acknowledgment of his inabilities did regulate that for him by chance which by the profoundest act of his maturest deliberation he was not able to reach unto that likewise which possibly made him too defied in his own skill and capacity notwithstanding his being an expert and understanding lawyer for anything that i know to the contrary was the knowledge and experience which he had of the antinomies contrarieties antilogies contradictions traversings and thwartings of laws customs edicts statutes orders and ordinances in which dangerous opposition equity and justice being structured and founded on either of the opposite terms and a gap being being thereby opened for the ushering in of injustice and iniquity through the various interpretations of self-ended lawyers 
being assuredly persuaded that the infernal calumniator who frequently transformeth himself into the likeness of a messenger or angel of light maketh use of these cross crosses and expositions in the mouths and pens of his ministers and servants the perverse advocates bribing judges law monging attorneys prevaricating counsellors and other such like law resting members of a court of justice to turn by those means black to white green to grey and what is straight to a crooked ply for the more expedient doing whereof these diabolical ministers make both the pleading parties believe that their cause is just and righteous for it is well known that there is no cause how bad soever which doth not find an advocate to patrocinate and defend it else would there be no process in the world no suits at law nor pleadings at the bar he did in these extremities as i conceive most humbly recommend the direction of his judicial proceedings to the upright judge of judges god almighty did submit himself to the conduct and guideship of the blessed spirit in the hazard and perplexity of the definitive sentence and by this aleatory lot did as it were implore and explore the divine decree of his good will and pleasure instead of that which we call the final judgment of a court to this effect to the better attaining to his purpose which was to judge righteously he did in my opinion throw and turn the dice to the end that by providence aforesaid the best chance might fall to him whose action was uprightest and backed with greatest reason in doing whereof he did not stray from the sense of talmudists who say that there is so little harm in that manner of searching the truth that in the anxiety and perplexedness of human wits god sovereign times manifesteth the secret pleasure of his divine will furthermore i will neither think nor say nor can i believe that the unstraightness is so irregular or the corruption so evident of those of the parliament of myrlingua in myrlings before whom bridal goose was arraigned for prevarication that they will maintain it to be a worse practice to have the decision of a suit at law referred to the chance and hazard of a throw of the dice hab nab or luck as it will than to have it remitted to and passed by determination of those whose hands are full of blood and hearts of wry affections besides that their principal direction in all law matters comes to their hands from one tribonian a wicked miscreant barbarous faithless and perfidious knave so pernicious unjust avaricious and perverse in his ways that it was his ordinary custom to sell laws edicts declarations constitutions and ordinances as at an out troop or put sale to him who offered most for them thus did he shape measures for the pleaders and cut their morsels to them by and out of these little parcels fragments pits scantlings and shreds of the law now in use altogether concealing suppressing disannulling and abolishing the remainder which did make for the total law fearing that if the whole law were made manifest and laid open to the knowledge of such as are interested in it and the learned books of the ancient doctors of the law upon the exposition of the twelve tables and praetorian edicts his villainous pranks naughtiness and vile impiety should come to the public notice of the world therefore were it better in my conceit that is to say less inconvenient that parties at variance than any juridical case should in the dark march upon caltrops then submit the determination of what is their right to such unhallowed sentences and horrible decrees as cato in his time wished and advised that every judiciary court should be paved with caltrops end of chapter three forty four chapter three forty five of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how panurge taketh advice of tribolet on the sixth day thereafter pantagruel was returned home at the very same hour that tribolet was by water come from blois panurge at his arrival gave him a hog's bladder puffed up with wind and resounding because of the hard peas that were within it moreover he did present him with a gilt wooden sword a hollow budget made of a tortoise shell an osier wattled wicker bottle full of breton wine and five-and-twenty apples of the orchard of blanc de if he be such a fool quoth carpelin 
as to be one with apples there is no more wit in his pate than in the head of an ordinary cabbage triboulet girded the sword and scrip to his side took the bladder in his hand ate some few of the apples and drunk up all the wine panurge very wistfully and heedfully looking upon him said i never yet saw a fool and have seen ten thousand francs worth of that kind of cattle who did not love to drink heartily and by good long draughts when triboulet had done with his drinking panurge laid out before him and exposed the sum of the business wherein he was to require his advice and eloquent in choice they sordid terms adorned with flourishes of rhetoric but before he had altogether done triboulet with his fist gave him a bouncing whirret between the shoulders rendered back into his hand again the empty bottle philipped and flirted him in the nose with the hog's bladder and lastly for a final resolution shaking and wagging his head strongly and disorderly he answered nothing else but this by god god mad fool beware the monk bu zanse hornpipe these words thus finished he slipped himself out of the company went aside and rattling the bladder took a huge delight in the melody of the rickling crackling noise of the peas after which time it lay not in the power of them all to draw out of his chaps the articulate sound of one syllable insomuch that when panurge went about to interrogate him further triboulet drew his wooden sword and would have stuck him therewith i have fished fair now quoth panurge and brought my pigs to a fine market have i not got a brave determination of all my doubts and a response in all things agreeable to the oracle that gave it he is a great fool that is not to be denied yet is he a greater fool who brought him hither to me that bolt quoth carpalin levels point blank at me but of the three i am the greatest fool who did impart the secret of my thoughts to such an idiot ass and native ninny without putting ourselves to any stir or trouble in the least quoth pantagruel let us maturely and seriously consider and perpend the gestures and speech which he hath made and uttered in them veritably quoth he have i remarked and observed some excellent and notable mysteries yea of such important worth and weight that i shall never henceforth be astonished nor think strange why the turks with a great deal of worship and reverence honour and respect natural fools equally with their primus doctors muftis divines and prophets did not you take heed quoth he a little before he opened his mouth to speak what a shogging shaking and wagging his head did keep by the approved doctrine of the ancient philosophers the customary ceremonies of the most expert magicians and the received opinions of the learnedest lawyers such a brangling agitation and moving should by us all be judged to proceed from and be quickened and suscitated by the coming and inspiration of the prophetizing and fatidical spirit which entering briskly and on a sudden into a shallow receptacle of a debile substance for as you know and as the proverb shows it a little head containeth not much brains was the cause of that commotion this is conformed to what is avouched by the most skilful physicians when they affirm that shakings and tremblings fall upon the members of a human body partly because of the heaviness and violent impetuosity of the burden and load that is carried and other part by reason of the weakness and imbecility that is in the virtue of the bearing organ a manifest example whereof appeareth in those who fasting are not able to carry to their head a great goblet full of wine without a trembling and a shaking in the hand that holds it this of old was accounted a prefiguration a mystical pointing out of the pythian divinerus who used always before the uttering of a response from the oracle to shake a branch of her domestic laurel lampridius also testifieth that the emperor heliogabalus 
to acquire unto himself the reputation of a soothsayer did on several holy days of prime solemnity in the presence of the fanatic rabble make the head of his idol by some slight within the body thereof publicly to shake claudus in his asinaria declareth likewise that sorius whithersoever he walked like one quite distracted of his wits kept such a furious lolling and mad-like shaking of his head that he commonly affrighted those who casually met with him in his way the said author in another place showing a reason why charmides shook and brangled his head as severed that he was transported and in an ecstasy catullus after the same manner maketh mention in his bera cynthia and Attis of the place wherein the menades bacchical women she priests of the laian god and demented prophetesses carrying ivy boughs in their hands did shake their heads as in the like case amongst the galley the gelded priests of cybele were wont to do in the celebrating of their festivals whence to according to the sense of the ancient theologues she herself as her denomination for cubistan signifieth to turn round whirl about shake the head and play the part of one that is wry necked semblably titus livius writeth that in the solemnization time of the bacchanalian holidays at rome both men and women seem to have prophetized and fatissimate because of an affected kind of wagging of the head shrugging of the shoulders and gestigation of the whole body which they use them most punctually for the common voice of the philosophers together with the opinion of the people asserted for an irrefragable truth that that vaccination is seldom by the heavens bestowed on any without the concomitancy of a little frenzy and a head shaking not only when the said presaging virtue is infused but when the person also therewith inspired declareth and manifesteth it unto others the learned lawyer julian being asked on a time if that slave might be truly esteemed to be helpful and in a good plight who had not only conversed with some furious maniac and enraged people but in their company had also prophesied yet without a noddle shaking concussion answered that seeing there was no head wagging at the time of his predictions he might be held for sound and compotent enough is it not daily seen how schoolmasters teachers tutors and instructors of children shake the heads of their disciples as one would do a pot in holding it by the lugs that by this erection delication stretching and pulling their ears which according to the doctrine of the sage egyptians as a member consecrated to the memory they may stir them up to recollect their scattered thoughts bring home those fancies of theirs which perhaps have been extravagantly roaming abroad upon strange and uncouth objects and totally range their judgments which possibly by disordinate affections have been made wild to the rule and pattern of a wise discreet virtuous and philosophical discipline all which virgil acknowledgeth to be true in the branglement of apollo cynthius end of chapter three forty five chapter three forty six of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how pantagruel and panurge diversely interpret the words of triboulet he says you are a fool and what kind of fool a mad fool who in your old age would enslave yourself to the bondage of matrimony and shut your pleasures up within a wedlock whose key some ruffian carries in his codpiece he says furthermore beware of the monk upon mine honour he gives me in my mind that you will be cuckolded by a monk nay i will engage mine honour which is the most precious pawn i could have in my possession although i were sole and peaceable dominator over all europe asia and africa that if you marry you will surely be one of the horned brotherhood of vulcan hereby may you perceive how much i do attribute to the wise foolery of our morosoft dribble the other oracles and responses did in the general prognosticate you a cuckold without descending so near to the point 
of a particular determination as to pitch upon what vocation amongst the several sorts of men he should profess who is to be the copse mate of your wife and hornifier of your proper self thus noble trivillet tells it us plainly from whose words we may gather with all ease imaginable that your cuckoldry is to be infamous and so much the more scandalous that your conjugal bed will be incestuously contaminated with the filthiness of a monkery lecher moreover he says that you will be the hornpipe of bazanse that is to say well horned hornified and cornuted and as tribolet's uncle asked from louis the twelfth for a younger brother of his own who lived at blois the hornpipes of bazanse for the organ pipes through the mistake of one word for another even so whilst you think to marry a wise humble calm discreet and honest wife you shall unhappily stumble upon one witless proud loud obstreperous bawling clamorous and more unpleasant than any buzz and say hornpipe consider withal how he flirted you on the nose with the bladder and gave you a sound thumping blow with his fist upon the ridge of the back this denotates and presageth that you shall be banged beaten and filliped by her and that also she will steal of your goods from you as you stole the hog's bladder from the little boys of vol breton flat contrary quoth panurge not that i would impudently exempt myself from being a vassal in the territory of folly i hold of that jurisdiction and am subject thereto i confess it and why should i not for the whole world is foolish in the old Iran language foo for two all and fool were the same thing besides it is about by solomon that infinite is the number of fools from an infinity nothing can be deducted or abated nor yet by the testimony of aristotle can anything thereto be added or subjoined therefore were i a mad fool if being a fool i should not hold myself a fool after the same manner of speaking we may aver the number of the mad and enraged folks to be infinite avicenna maketh no bones to assert that the several kinds of madness are infinite though this much of tribolet's words tend little to my advantage howbeit the prejudice which i sustain thereby be common with me to all other men yet the rest of his talk and gesture maketh altogether for me he said to my wife be wary of the monkey that is as much as if she should be cheery and take as much delight in a monkey as ever did the lesbia of catullus in her sparrow who will for his recreation pass his time no less joyfully at the exercise of snatching flies than heretofore to the merciless flycatcher domitian with all he meant by another part of his discourse that she should be of a jovial country-like humour as gay and pleasing as a harmonious hornpipe of solio and buzzance the veridical trivolet did therein hint at what i liked well as perfectly knowing the inclinations and propensions of my mind my natural disposition and the bias of my interior passions and affections for you may be assured that my humour is much better satisfied and contented with the pretty frolic rural dishevelled shepherdesses whose bums through their coarse canvas smock smell of the clover grass of the field than with those great ladies in magnific courts with their flandan topknots and sultanas their poleville pastillos and cosmetics the homely sound likewise of a rustical hornpipe is more agreeable to my ears than the curious warbling and musical quavering of lutes the oboes the viols rebecks and violins he gave me a lusty rapping thwack on my back what then let it pass in the name and for the love of god as an abatement of and deduction from so much of my future pains in purgatory he did it not out of any evil intent he thought belike to have hit some of the pages he is an honest fool and an innocent changeling it is a sin to harbour in the heart any bad conceit of him as for myself i heartily pardon him he flirted me on the nose in that there is no harm for it importeth nothing else but that betwixt my wife and me there will occur some toyish wanton tricks which usually happen to all new married folks End of chapter three forty six chapter three forty seven of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois Rabelais this LibriVox recording is in the public domain how pantagruel and panurge resolved to make a visit to the oracle of the holy bottle 
there is as yet another point quoth panurge which you have not at all considered on although it be the chief and principal head of the matter he put the bottle in my hand and restored it me again how interpret you that passage what is the meaning of that he possibly quoth pantagruel signifieth thereby that your wife will be such a drunkard as shall daily take in her liquor kindly and ply the pots and bottles apace quite otherwise quoth panurge for the bottle was empty i swear to you by the prickling brambly thorn of st fiacre in brie that our unique morisoff whom i formerly termed the lunatic triboulet referreth me for attaining to the final resolution of my scruple to the response-giving bottle therefore do i renew afresh the first vow which i made and here in your presence protest and make oath by sticks and acheron to carry still spectacles in my cap and never to wear a codpiece in my breeches until upon the enterprise and hand of my nuptial undertaking i shall have obtained an answer from the holy bottle i am acquainted with a prudent understanding and discreet gentleman and besides a very good friend of mine who knoweth the land country and place where its temple and oracle is built and posited he will guide and conduct us thither sure and safely let us go thither i beseech you deny me not and say not nay reject not the suit i make unto you i entreat you i will be to you an achates a damus and heartily accompany you all along in the whole voyage both in your going forth and coming back i have of a long time known you to be a great lover of peregrination desirous still to learn new things and still to see what you had never seen before very willingly quoth pantagruel i condescend to your request but before we enter in upon our progress towards the accomplishment of so far a journey replenished and fraught with eminent perils full of innumerable hazards in every way stored with evident and manifest dangers what dangers quoth panurge interrupting him dangers fly back run from and shun me whithersoever i go seven leagues around as in the presence of the sovereign a subordinate magistracy is eclipsed whereas clouds and darkness quite evanish at the bright coming of a radiant sun whereas all sores and sicknesses did suddenly depart at the approach of the body of st martin of quanda nevertheless quoth pantagruel before we adventure to set forwards on the road of our projected and intended voyage some few points are to be discussed expedited and dispatched first let us send back triboulet to blois which was instantly done after that pantagruel had given him a frieze coat secondly our design must be backed with the advice and counsel of the king my father and lastly it is most needful and expedient for us that we search for and find out some sibyl to serve us for a guide truckman and interpreter to this panurge made answer that his friend xenomanes would abundantly suffice for the plenary discharge and performance of the sibyl's office and that furthermore in passing through the lanternatory revelling country they should take along with them a learned and profitable lanterness which would be no less useful to them in their voyage than was the sibyl to aeneas in his descent to the elysian fields carpala in the interim as he was upon the conducting away of triboulet in his passing by hearkened a little to the discourse they were upon then spoke out saying ho panurge master freeman take my lord debitus of calais alongst with you for he is good fellow a good fellow he will not forget those who have been debitors these are lanterns thus shall you not lack for both fellow and lantern i may safely with the little skill i have quoth pantagruel prognosticate that by the way we shall engender no melancholy i clearly perceive it already the only thing that vexeth me is that i cannot speak the lanternatory language i shall answered panurge speak for you all i understand it every whit as well as i do mine own maternal tongue i have been no less used to it than to the vulgar french bismarck thou got brick nub sos isquebiz busk albacring zabak nisba dilbox morp nip 
stance bas stroms panurge wal mat folk rusbach now guess friend the pistamon what this is they are quoth the pistamon names of errant devils passant devils and rampant devils these words of thine dear friend of mine are true quoth banerge yet are they terms used in the language of the court of the lanternish people by the way as we go upon our journey i will make to thee a pretty little dictionary which notwithstanding shall not last you much longer than a pair of new shoes thou shalt have learned it sooner than thou canst perceive the dawning of the next subsequent morning what i have said in the foregoing tetra stitch is thus translated out of the lanternish tongue into our vulgar dialect all miseries attended me whilst i a lover was and had no good thereby of better luck the married people tell panurge is one of those and knows it well there is little more than quoth pantagruel to be done but that we understand what the will of the king my father will be therein and purchase his consent End of chapter three forty seven chapter three forty eight of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how gargantua showeth that the children ought not to marry without the special knowledge and advice of their fathers and mothers no sooner had pantagruel entered in at the door of the great hall of the castle than that he encountered full butt with the good honest gargantua coming forth from the council board unto whom he made a succinct and summary narrative of what had passed and occurred worthy of his observation in his travels abroad since their last interview then acquainting him with the design he had in hand besought him that it might stand with his good will and pleasure to grant him leave to prosecute and go through stitch with the enterprise which he had undertaken the good man gargantua having in one hand two great bundles of petitions endorsed and answered and in the other some remembrancing notes and bills to put him in mind of such other requests of supplicants which albeit presented had nevertheless been neither read nor heard he gave both to ulrich gallet his ancient and faithful master of requests then drew aside pantagruel and with a countenance more serene and jovial than customary spoke to him thus i praise god and have great reason so to do my most dear son that he hath been pleased to entertain in you a constant inclination to virtuous actions i am well content that the voyage which you have motioned to me be by you accomplished but withal i could wish you would have a mind and desire to marry for that i see you are of competent years panurge in the meanwhile was in a readiness of preparing and providing for remedies salves and cures against all such lets obstacles and impediments as he could in the height of his fancy conceive might by gargantua be cast in the way of their itinerary design is it your pleasure most dear father that you speak answered pantagruel for my part i have not yet thought upon it in all this affair i wholly submit and rest in your good liking and paternal authority for i shall rather pray unto god that he would throw me down stark dead at your feet in your pleasure than that against your pleasure i should be found married alive i never yet heard that by any law whether sacred or profane yea 
amongst the rudest and most barbarous nations in the world it was allowed and approved of that children may be suffered and tolerated to marry at their own good will and pleasure without the knowledge advice or consent asked and had thereto of their fathers mothers and nearest kindred all legislators everywhere upon the face of the whole earth have taken away and removed this licentious liberty from children and totally reserved it to the discretion of the parents my dearly beloved son quoth gargantua i believe you and from my heart thank god for having endowed you with the grace of having both a perfect notice of and entire liking to laudable and praiseworthy things and that through the windows of your exterior senses he hath vouchsafed to transmit unto the interior faculties of your mind nothing but what is good and virtuous for in my time there hath been found on the continent a certain country wherein are i know not what kind of pastophorian mole-catching priests who albeit averse from engaging their proper persons in a matrimonial duty like the pontifical flamens of Sibeli and phrygia as if they were capons and not cocks full of lasciviousness salacity and wantonness who yet have nevertheless in the matter of conjugal affairs taken upon them to prescribe laws and ordinances to married folks i cannot goodly determine what i should most abhor detest loathe and abominate whether the tyrannical presumption of those dreaded sacerdotal mole-catchers who not being willing to contain and coop up themselves within the grates and trellises of their own mysterious temples do deal in meddle with obtrude upon and thrust their sickles into harvests of secular businesses quite contrary and diametrically opposed to the quality state and condition of their callings professions and vocations or the superstitious stupidity and senseless scrupulousness of married folks who have yielded obedience and submitted their bodies fortunes and estates to the discretion and authority of such odious perverse barbarous and unreasonable laws nor do they see that which is clearer than the light and splendour of the morning star how all these nuptial and connubial sanctions statutes and ordinances have been decreed made and instituted for the sole benefit profit and advantage of the flaminal mists and mysterious flamens and nothing at all for the good utility or emolument of the silly hoodwinked married people which administereth unto others a sufficient cause for rendering these churchmen suspicious of iniquity and of an unjust and fraudulent manner of dealing no more to be connived at nor countenanced after that it be well weighed in the scales of reason than if with a reciprocal temerity the legs by way of compensation would impose laws to be followed and observed by those mists and flamens how they should behave themselves in the making and performance of their rites and ceremonies and after what many they ought to proceed in the offering up and immolating of their various oblations victims and sacrifices seeing that besides the decimation and tithe hailing of their goods they cut off and take parings shreddings and clippings of the gain proceeding from the labour of their hands and sweat of their brows therewith to entertain themselves the better upon which consideration in my opinion their injunctions and commands would not prove so pernicious and impertinent as those of the ecclesiastic power unto which they had tendered their blind obedience for as you have very well said there is no place in the world where legally a license is granted to the children to marry without the advice and consent of their parents and kindred nevertheless by those wicked laws and mole-catching customs whereat there is a little hinted in what i have already spoken to you there is no scurvy measly leprous or pocky ruffian pander knave rogue skellum robber or thief pilloried whipped and burn marked 
in his own country for his crimes and felonies who may not violently snatch away and ravish what maid soever he had a mind to pitch upon how noble how fair how rich honest and chaste soever she be and that out of the house of her own father in his own presence from the bosom of her mother and in the sight and despite of her friends and kindred looking on a so woeful spectacle provided that the rascal villain be so cunning as to associate unto himself some mystical flamen who according to the covenant made betwixt them two shall be in hope some day to participate of the prey could the gulfs the cysts or massagets do a worse or more cruel act to any of the inhabitants of a hostile city when after the loss of many of their most considerable commanders the expense of a great deal of money and a long siege they shall have stormed and taken it by a violent and impetuous assault may not these fathers and mothers thank you be sorrowful and heavy-hearted when they see an unknown fellow a vagabond stranger a barbarous lout a rude cur rotten fleshless putrefied scraggy boily botchy poor a forlorn caitiff and miserable sneak by an open rapt snatch away before their own eyes they are so fair delicate neat well behaviored richly provided for and healthful daughters on whose breeding and education they had spared no cost nor charges by bringing them up in an honest discipline to all the honourable and virtuous employments becoming one of their sex descended of a noble parentage hoping by those commendable and industrious means in an opportune and convenient time to bestow them on the worthy sons of their well-deserving neighbours and ancient friends who had nourished entertained taught instructed and schooled their children with the same care and solicitude to make them matches fit to attain to the felicity of a so happy marriage that from them might issue an offspring and progeny no less heirs to the laudable endowments and exquisite qualifications of their parents whom they every way resemble than to their personal and real estates movables and inheritances how doleful trist and plangorous would such a sight and pageantry prove unto them you shall not need to think that the calicremation of the romans and their confederates at the decease of germanicus drusus was comparable to this lamentation of theirs neither would i have you to believe that the discomfort and anxiety of the lacedaemonians when the greek helen by the perfidiousness of the adulterous trojan paris was privily stolen away out of their country was greater or more pitiful than this ruthful and deplorable collugency of theirs you may very well imagine that ceres at the ravishment of her daughter proserpina was not more attristed sad nor mournful than they trust me and your own reason that the loss of osiris was not so regrettable to isis nor did venus so deplore the death of adonis nor yet did hercules so bewail the straying of hylas nor was the rapt polyxena more throbbingly resented and condoled by primus and hecuba than this aforesaid accident would be sympathetically bemoaned grievous ruthful and anxious to the woefully desolate and disconsolate parents notwithstanding all this the greater part of so vilely abused parents are so timorous and afraid of devils and hobgoblins and so deeply plunged in superstition that they dare not gainsay nor contradict much less oppose and resist those unnatural and impious actions when the mole-catcher hath been present at the perpetrating of the fact and a party contractor and covenanter in that detestable bargain what do they do then they wretchedly stay at their own miserable homes destitute of their well beloved daughters the fathers cursing the days and the hours wherein they were married and the mothers howling and crying that it was not their fortune to have brought forth abortive issues when they happened to be delivered of such unfortunate girls and in this pitiful plight spend at best the remainder of their time with tears and weeping for those their children of and from whom they expected and with good reason should have obtained and reaped in these latter days of theirs joy and comfort other parents there have been so impatient of that affront and indignity put upon them 
and their families that transported with the extremity of passion in a mad and frantic mood through the vehemency of a grievous fury and raging sorrow have drowned hanged killed and otherwise put violent hands on themselves others again of the parental relation have upon the reception of the like injury been of a more magnanimous and heroic spirit who in imitation and at the example of the children of jacob revenging upon the sycamites raped of their sister dinah having found the rascally ruffian in the association of his mystical mole-catcher closely and in hugger-mugger conferring parlaying and coming with their daughters for the suborning corrupting depraving perverting and enticing these innocent unexperienced maids into filthy lewdnesses have without any further advisement on the matter cut them instantly into pieces and thereupon forthwith thrown out upon the fields their so dismembered bodies to serve for food unto the wolves and ravens upon the chivalrous bold and courageous achievement of a so valiant stout and man-like act the other mole-catching simists have been so highly incensed and have so chafed fretted and fumed thereat that bills of complaint and accusations having been in a most odious and detestable manner put in before the competent judges the arm of secular authority hath with much importunity and impetuosity been by them implored and required they proudly contending that the servants of god would become contemptible if exemplary punishment were not speedily taken upon the persons of the perpetrators of such an enormous horrid sacrilegious crying heinous and execrable crime yet neither by natural equity by the law of nations nor by any imperial law whatsoever hath there been found so much as one rubric paragraph point or tittle by the which any kind of chastisement or correction hath been adjudged due to be inflicted upon any for their delinquency in that kind reason opposeth and nature is repugnant for there is no virtuous man in the world who both naturally and with good reason will not be more hugely troubled in mind hearing of the news of the raped disgrace ignominy and dishonour of his daughter than of her death now any man finding in a hot blood one who with a forethought felony hath murdered his daughter may without tying himself to the formalities and circumstances of a legal proceeding kill him on a sudden and out of hand without incurring any hazard of being attainted and apprehended by the officers of justice for so doing what wonder is it then or how little strange should it appear to any rational man if a lettering rogue together with his mole catching a better be entrapped in the flagrant act of suborning his daughter and stealing her out of his house though herself consent thereto that the father in such a case of stain and infamy by them brought upon his family should put them both to a shameful death and cast their carcasses upon dunghills to be devoured and eaten up by dogs and swine or otherwise fling them a little further off to the deruption tearing and rending asunder of their joints and members by the wild beasts of the field as unworthy to receive the gentle the desired the last kind embraces of the great alma mater the earth commonly called burial dearly beloved son have an especial care that after my decease none of these laws be received in any of your kingdoms for whilst i breathe by the grace and assistance of god i shall give good order seeing therefore you have totally referred unto my discretion the disposure of you in marriage i am fully of an opinion that i shall provide sufficiently well for you in that point make ready and prepare yourself for panurge's voyage take along with you epistemon friar john and such others as you will choose do with my treasures what unto you yourself shall seem most expedient none of your actions i promise you can in any manner of way displease me take out of my arsenal the less whatsoever equipage furniture or provision you please together with such pilots mariners and truckmen as you have a mind to and with the first fair and favourable wind set sail and make out to sea in the name of god our saviour in the meanwhile during your absence i shall not be neglective of providing a wife for you nor of those preparations which are requisite to be made for the more sumptuous solemnizing of your nuptials with a most splendid feast if ever there was any in the world since the days of ahasuerus End of chapter three forty eight
chapter three forty nine of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how pantagruel did put himself in a readiness to go to sea and of the herb named pantagruelian within very few days after that pantagruel had taken his leave of the good gargantua who devoutly prayed for his son's happy voyage he arrived at the seaport near to Samalo, accompanied with panurge epistemon friar john of the funnels the abbot of Thaline, and others of the royal house especially with Zinomanes, the great traveller and thwarter of dangerous ways who was come at the bidding and appointment of panurge of whose castlewick of salmagandan he did hold some petty inheritance by the tenure of a mesne fee pantagruel being come thither prepared and made ready for launching a fleet of ships to the number of those which ajax of salamine had of old equipped in convoy of the grecian soldiery against the trojan state he likewise picked out for his use so many mariners pilots sailors interpreters artificers officers and soldiers as he thought fitting and therewithal made provision of so much victuals of all sorts artillery munition of divers kinds clothes monies and other such luggage stuff baggage chaffer and furniture as he deemed needful for carrying on the design of a so tedious long and perilous voyage amongst other things it was observed how he caused some of his vessels to be fraught and loaded with a great quantity of an herb of his called pantragulion not only of the green and raw sort of it but of the confected also and of that which was notably well befitted for present use after the fashion of conserves the herb pantragulion hath a little root somewhat hard and rough roundish terminating in an obtuse and very blunt point and having some of its veins strings or filaments coloured with some spots of white never fixeth itself into the ground above the profoundness almost of a cubit or foot and a half from the root thereof proceedeth the only stalk orbicular cane-like green without whitish within and hollow like the stem of smyrnium olus atrum beans and gentian full of long threads straight easy to be broken jagged snipped nicked and notched a little after the manner of pillars and columns slightly furrowed chamfered guttered and channelled and full of fibres or hairs like strings in which consisteth the chief value and dignity of the herb especially in that part thereof which is termed mesa as he would say the mean and in that other which hath got the denomination of milice its height is commonly of five or six foot yet sometimes it is of such a tall growth as doth surpass the length of the lance for that is only when it meeteth with a sweet easy warm wet and well soaked soil as is the ground of the territory of aloni and that of rassi near to Prenesta in sabinia and that it want not for rain enough about the season of the fishers holidays and the estival solstice there are many trees whose height is by it very far exceeded and you might call it dendromalachi by the authority of theophrastus the plant every year perisheth the tree neither in the trunk root bark or boughs being durable from the stalk of this pantagruelian plant there issue forth several large and great branches whose leaves have thrice as much length as breadth always green roughish and rugged like the orconet or spanish bugglass hardish slit round about like unto a sickle or as the saxifragum betony and finally ending as it were in the points of a macedonian spear or of such a lancet as surgeons commonly make use of in their phlebotomizing tiltings the figure and shape of the leaves thereof is not much different from that of those of the ash tree or of agrimony the herb itself being so like the eupatorian plant that many skilful herbalists have called it the domestic eupater and the eupater the wild pantagruelian these leaves are in equal and parallel distances spread around the stalk by the number in every rank either five or seven 
nature having so highly favoured and cherished this plant that she hath richly adorned it with these two odd divine and mysterious numbers the smell thereof is somewhat strong and not very pleasing to nice tender and delicate noses the seed enclosed therein mounteth up to the very top of its stalk and a little above it this is a numerous herb for there is no less abundance of it than of any other whatsoever some of these plants are spherical some rhomboid and some of an oblong shape and all of those either black bright coloured or tawny rude to the touch and mantled with a quickly blasted away coat yet such a one as is of a delicious taste and savour to all shrill and sweetly singing birds such as linnets goldfinches larks canary birds yellow hammers and others of the that chirping choir but it would quite extinguish the natural heat and procreative virtue of the cements of any man who would eat much and often of it and although that of old amongst the greeks there were certain kinds of fritters and pancakes buns and tarts made thereof which commonly for a licorice daintiness were presented on the table after supper to delight the palate and make the wine relish the better yet is it of a difficult concoction and offensive to the stomach for it engendereth bad and unwholesome blood and with its exorbitant heat woundeth them with grievous hurtful smart and noisome vapours and as in divers plants and trees there are two sexes male and female which is perceptible in laurels palms cypresses oaks homes the daffodil mandrake fern the agaric mushroom birthwort turpentine pennyroyal peony rose of the mount and many other such like even so in this herb there is a male which beareth no flower at all yet it is very copious of and abundant in seed there is likewise in it a female which hath great store and plenty of whitish flowers serviceable to little or no purpose nor doth it carry in it seed of any worth at all at least comparable to that of the male it hath also a larger leaf and much softer than that of the male nor doth it altogether grow to so great a height this pantagruelian is to be sown at the first coming of the swallows it is to be plucked out of the ground when the grasshoppers begin to be a little hoarse End of chapter three forty nine chapter three fifty of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how the famous pantagruelian ought to be prepared and wrought the herb pantagruelian in september under the autumnal equinox is dressed and prepared several ways according to the various fancies of the people and diversity of the climates wherein it groweth the first instruction which pantagruel gave concerning it was to divest and despoil the stalk and stem thereof of all its flowers and seeds to macerate and mortify it in pond pool or lake water which is to be made run a little for five days together properly lake water which is to be made stagnant not current for five days together m if the season be dry and the water hot or for full nine or twelve days if the weather be cloudish and the water cold then must it be parched before the sun till it be drained of its moisture after this it is in the shadow where the sun shines not to be peeled and its rind pulled off then are the fibres and strings thereof to be parted wherein as we have already said consisteth its prime virtue price and efficacy and severed from the woody part thereof which is unprofitable and serveth hardly to any other use than to make a clear and glistering blaze to kindle the fire and for the play pastime and disport of little children to blow up hogs bladders and make them rattle many times some use is made thereof by tippling sweet-lipped bibbers who out of it frame quills and pipes through which they with their liquor attractive breath suck up the new dainty wine from the bung of the barrel some modern pantragoulis to shun and avoid that manual labour which such a separating and partitional work would 
of necessity require employ certain cataractic instruments composed and formed after the same manner that the froward pettish and angry juno did hold the fingers of both her hands interwovenly clenched together when she would have hindered the childbirth delivery of alcmena at the nativity of hercules and athwart those cataracts they break and bruise to very trash the woody parcels thereby to preserve the better the fibres which are the precious and excellent parts in and with this sole operation do these acquiesce and are contented who contrary to the received opinion of the whole earth and in a manner paradoxical to all philosophers gain their livelihoods backwards and by recoiling but those that love to hold it at a higher rate and prize it according to its value for their own greater profit to the very same which is told us of the recreation of the three fatal sister parsi or of the nocturnal exercise of the noble circe or yet of the excuse which penelope made to her fond wooing youngsters and effeminate courtiers during the long absence of her husband ulysses by these means is this herb put into a way to display its inestimable virtues whereof i will discover a part for to relate all is a thing impossible to do i have already interpreted and exposed before you the denomination thereof i find that plants have their names given and bestowed upon them after several ways some got the name of him who first found them out knew them sowed them improved them by culture qualified them to tractability and appropriated them to the uses and subserviences they were fit for as the mercuriala from mercury panacea from panace the daughter of esculapius armois from artemis who is diana you patoria from the king you pater telephion from telephus euphorbium from euphorbus king juba's physician clemenos from pomenus alcabiatum from alcibiades gentiana from gentius king of sclavonia and so forth through a great many other herbs or plants truly in ancient times this prerogative of imposing the inventor's name upon an herb found out by him was held in a so great account and estimation that as a controversy arose betwixt neptune and pallas from which of them two that land should receive its denomination which had been equally found out by them both together though thereafter it was called and had the appellation of athens from athena which is minerva just so would lie lincius king of scythia have treacherously slain the young tripalamus whom ceres had sent to show unto mankind the invention of corn which until then had been utterly unknown to the end that after the murder of the messenger whose death he made account to have kept secret he might by imposing with the less suspicion of false dealing his own name upon the said found out seed acquire unto himself an immortal honour and glory for having been the inventor of a grain so profitable and necessary to and for the use of human life for the wickedness of which treasonable attempt he was by series transformed into that wild beast which by some is called a lynx and by others an ounce such also was the ambition of others upon the like occasion as appeareth by that very sharp wars and of a long continuance have been made of old betwixt some residentiary kings of cappadocia upon this only debate of whose name a certain herb should have the appellation by reason of which difference so troublesome and expensive to them all it was by them called palamonium and by as for the same cause term make bait other herbs and plants there are which retain the names of the countries from which they were transported as the median apples from medea where they first grew punic apples from punicia that is to say carthage ligusticum which we call lovage from liguria the coast of genoa rhubarb from a flood in barbary as amahanus attesteth called rue santonica from a region of that name fenu greek from greece castanis from a country so called persicaria from persia sabine from a territory of that appellation stichus from the stichud islands spicus celtica from the land of the celtic gauls and so throughout a great many other which were tedious to enumerate some others again have obtained their denominations by way of antiphrasis or contrariety 
as absinthe because it is contrary to synthos for it is bitter to the taste in drinking holostion as if it were all bones whilst on the contrary there is no frailer tenderer nor brittler herb in the whole production of nature than it there are some other sorts of herbs which have got their names from their virtues in operations as aristolochia because it helpeth women in childbirth lichen for that it cureth the disease of that name mallow because it mollifieth calithricum because it maketh the hair of a bright colour alyssum ephemerum vacuum nasturtium anabon henbane and so forth through many more other some there are which have obtained their names from the admirable qualities that are found to be in them as heliotropium which is the marigold because it followeth the sun so that at the sun rising it displayeth and spreads itself out at his ascending it mounteth at his declining it waneth and when he has said it it is close shut and the because although it grow near unto watery places and albeit you should let it lie in water a long time it will nevertheless retain no moisture nor humidity heriarchia eryngium and so throughout a great many more there are also a great many herbs and plants which have retained the very same names of the men and women who have been metamorphosed or transformed in them as from daphne the laurel is called also daphne myrrh from myra the daughter of canarius pythis from pythis canara which is the artichoke from one of that name narcissus with saffron smilax and divers others many herbs likewise have got their names of those things which they seem to have some resemblance to hipparus because it hath the likeness of a horse's tail allopacurus because it representeth in similitude the tail of a fox cilion from a flea which it resembleth delphinium for that it is like a dolphin fish bugloss is so called because it is an herb like an ox's tongue iris so called because in its flower it has some resemblance of the rainbow myosota because it is like the ear of a mouse coronapus for it is of the likeness of a crow's foot a great many other such there are which here to recite were needless furthermore as there are herbs and plants which have had their names from those of men so by a reciprocal denomination have the surnames of many families taken their origin from them as the fabii of fabus beans the pisans of pisces peas the lentuli from lentils the cicerones a ciceribus vel ciceris a sort of pulse called chickpeas and so forth in some plants and herbs the resemblance or likeness hath been taken from a higher mark or object as when we say venus navel venus hair venus tub jupiter's beard jupiter's eye mars blood the hermodactyl or mercury's fingers which are all of them names of herbs as there are a great many more of the like appellation others again have received their denomination from their forms such as the trefoil because it is three-leaved pentaphylon for having five leaves serpolet because it creepeth along the ground hell zine potast myrrh robalon which the arabians call bean as if you would say an acorn for it hath a kind of resemblance thereto and withal is very oily End of chapter three fifty chapter three fifty one of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain why it is called pantagruelion and of the admirable virtues thereof by such like means of attaining to a denomination the fabulous ways being only from thence accepted for the lord forbid that we should make use of any fables in this a so veritable history is this herb called pantagruelion for pantagruel was the inventor thereof i do not say of the plant itself but of a certain use which it serves for exceeding odious and hateful to thieves and robbers unto whom it is more contrarious and hurtful than the strangle-weed and choke-fitch is to the flax the cat's tail to the brakes the sheave-grass to the mowers of hay the fitches to the chickney-peas the darnel to barley the hatchet-fitch to the lentil-pulse the 
antra mium to the beans teres to wheat ivy to walls the water lily to lecherous monks the birchen rod to the scholars of the college of navarre in paris colewort to the vine tree garlic to the lodestone onions to the site fern seed to women with child willow grain to vicious nuns the yew tree shade to those that sleep under it wolfsbane to wolves and libbards the smell of fig tree to mad bulls hemlock to goslings purslane to the teeth or oil to trees for we have seen many of those rogues by virtue and right application of this herb finish their lives short and long after the manner of phyllis queen of thracia of bonuses emperor of rome of amata king latinus's wife of iphis autolycus lycambi arachne phaedra leda achaeus king of lydia and many thousands more who were chiefly angry and vexed at this disaster therein that without being otherwise sick or evil disposed in their bodies by a touch only of the pantagruelian they came on a sudden to have the passage obstructed and their pipes through which were wont to bolt so many jolly sings and to enter so many luscious morsels stopped more cleverly than ever could have done the squinancy others have been heard most woefully to lament at the very instant when atropos was about to cut the thread of their life that pantagruel held them by the gorge but well a day it was not pantagruel he never was an executioner it was the pantagruelian manufactured and fashioned into an halter and serving in the place and office of the cravat in that verily they solecized and spoke improperly unless you would excuse them by a trope which alloweth us to posit the inventor in the place of the thing invented as when ceres is taken for bread and back is put instead of wine i swear to you here by the good and frolic words which are to issue out of that wine bottle which is a cooling below in the copper vessel full of fountain water that the noble pantagruel never snatched any man by the throat unless it was such a one as was altogether careless and neglective of those obviating remedies which were preventive of the thirst to come it is also termed pantagruelian by a similitude for pantagruel at the very first minute of his birth was no less tall than this herb is long whereof i speak unto you his measure having been then taken the more easy that he was born in the season of the great drought when they were busiest in the gathering of the said herb to wit at that time when icarus's dog with his fiery falling and barking at the sun maketh the whole world troglodytic and enforceth people everywhere to hide themselves in dens and subterranean caves it is likewise called pantagruelian because of the notable and singular qualities virtues and properties thereof for as pantagruel hath been the idea pattern prototype and exemplary of all jovial perfection and accomplishment in the truth whereof i believe there is none of you gentlemen drinkers that putteth any question so in this pantagruelian have i found so much efficacy and energy so much completeness and excellency so much exquisiteness and rarity and so many admirable effects and operations of a transcendent nature that if the worth and virtue thereof had been known when those trees by the relation of the prophet made election of a wooden king to rule and govern over them it without all doubt would have carried away from all the rest the plurality of votes and suffrages shall i yet say more if oxalus the son of aureus had begotten this plant upon his sister hamadryas he had taken more delight in the value and perfection of it alone than in all his eight children so highly renowned by our ablest mythologians that they have sedulously recommended their names to the never-failing tuition of an eternal remembrance the eldest child was a daughter whose name was vine the next born was a boy and his name was fig tree the third was called walnut tree the fourth oak the fifth sore apple tree the sixth ash the seventh poplar and the last had the name of elm 
who was the greatest surgeon in his time i shall forbear to tell you how the juice or sap thereof being poured and distilled within the ears killeth every kind of vermin that by any manner of putrefaction cometh to be bred and engendered there and destroyeth also any whatsoever other animal that shall have entered in thereat if likewise you put a little of the said juice within a pail or bucket full of water you shall see the water instantly turn and grow thick therewith as if it were milk curds whereof the virtue is so great that the water thus curded is a present remedy for horses subject to the colic and such as strike at their own flanks the root thereof well boiled mollifieth the joints softeneth the hardness of shrunken sinews is every way comfortable to the nerves and good against all cramps and convulsions as likewise all cold and knotty gouts if you would speedily heal a burning whether occasioned by a water or fire apply thereto a little raw pantagruelian that is to say take it so as it cometh out of the ground without bestowing any other preparation or composition upon it but have a special care to change it for some fresher in lieu thereof as soon as you shall find it waxing dry upon the sore without this herb kitchens would be detested the tables of dining-rooms abhorred although there were great plenty and variety of most dainty and sumptuous dishes of meat set down upon them and the choicest beds also how richly soever adorned with gold silver amber ivory porphyry and the mixture of most precious metals would without it yield no delight or pleasure to the reposers in them without it millers could neither carry wheat nor any other kind of corn to the mill nor would they be able to bring back from thence flour or any other sort of meal whatsoever without it how could the papers and writs of lawyers clients be brought to the bar seldom is the mortar lime or plaster brought to the workhouse without it without it how should the water be got out of a draw well in what case would tabellions notaries coppice makers of counterpanes writers clerks secretaries scriveners and such like persons be without it were it not for it what would become of the toll rates and rent rolls would not the noble art of printing perish without it where could the chassis or paper windows be made how should the bells be rung the altars of isis are adorned therewith the pastor for and priests are therewith clad and accoutred and whole human nature covered and wrapped therein at its first position of production in and into this world all the lanific trees of ceres the bombast and cotton bushes in the territories near the persian sea and gulf of bengala the arabian swans together with the plants of malta do not all of them clothe attire and apparel so many persons as this one herb alone soldiers are nowadays much better sheltered under it than they were in former times when they lay in tents covered with skins it overshadows the theatres and amphitheatres from the heat of a scorching sun it begirdeth and encompasseth forests chases parks copses and groves for the pleasure of hunters it descendeth into the salt and fresh of both sea and river waters for the profit of fishers by it are boots of all sizes buskins gamashes bodkins gambados shoes pumps slippers and every cobbled ware wrought and made studdable for the use of man by it the butt and rover bows are strung the crossbows bended and the slings made fixed and as if it were an herb every wit as holy as the vervain and reverenced by ghosts spirits hobgoblins fiends and phantoms the bodies of deceased men are never buried without it i will proceed yet further by the means of this fine herb the invisible substances are visibly stopped arrested taken detained and prisoner-like committed to their receptive jails heavy and ponderous weights are by it heaved lifted up turned veered drawn carried in every way moved quickly nimbly and easily to the great profit and emolument of humankind when i prepend with myself these and such like marvellous effects of this wonderful herb it seemeth strange unto me how the invention of so useful a practice did escape through so many bypassed ages the knowledge of the ancient philosophers considering the inestimable utility which from thence proceeded and the immense labour which without it they did undergo in their pristine elucubrations by virtue thereof through the retention of some aerial gusts are the huge rambarges mighty galleons the large floats the chaleander the myriander ships launched from their stations and set a-going at the pleasure and arbitrament of their rulers condors and steersmen 
by the help thereof those remote nations whom nature seemed so unwilling to have discovered to us and so desirous to have kept them still in amscondito and hidden from us that the ways through which their countries were to be reached unto were not only totally unknown but judged also to be altogether impermeable and inaccessible are now arrived to us and we to them those voyages outreach flights of birds and far surpass the scope of feathered fowls how swift soever they had been on the wing and notwithstanding that advantage which they have of us in swimming through the air taproban hath seen the heaths of lapland and both the javas and the fian mountains why a distant feeble shall see feline and the islanders drink of the flood euphrates play at the chill mouth boreas hath surveyed the parched mansions of the torrid auster and eurus visited the regions which cephrus hath under his command he in such sort have interviews been made by the assistance of the sacred herb that maugre longitudes and latitudes and all the variations of the zones the periesian people and antician amphician eterosian and parisian had oft rendered and received mutual visits to and from other upon all the climates these strange exploits bred such astonishment to the celestial intelligences to all the marine and terrestrial gods that they were on a sudden all afraid from which amazement when they saw how by means of this blessed pantagruelian the arctic people looked upon the antarctic scoured the atlantic ocean passed the tropics pushed through the torrid zone measured all the zodiacs bordered under the equinoctial having both poles level with their horizon they judged it high time to call a council for their own safety and preservation the olympic gods being all and each of them affrighted at the sight of such achievements said pantagruel hath shapen work enough for us and put us more to a plunge and nearer our wits in by the sole herb of his than did of old the alloyadi by overturning mountains he very speedily is to be married and shall have many children by his wife it lies not in our power to oppose this destiny for it hath passed through the hands and spindles of the fatal sisters necessities and exorable daughters who knows but by his sons may be found out an herb of such another virtue and prodigious energy as that by the aid thereof in using it aright according to their father's skill they may contrive a way for humankind to pierce into the high aryan clouds get up unto the spring-head of the hail take an inspection of the snowy sources and shut and open as they please the sluices from whence proceed the floodgates of the rain then prosecuting their ethereal voyage they may step in unto the lightning workhouse and shop where all the thunderbolts are forged where seizing on the magazine of heaven and storehouse of our warlike fire munition they may discharge a bouncing peal of two a thundering ordinance for joy of their arrival to these new supernal places and charging those tonitrual guns afresh turn the whole force of that artillery against ourselves wherein we most confided then is it like they will set forward to invade the territories of the moon whence passing through both mercury and venus the sun will serve them for a torch to show the way from mars to jupiter and saturn we shall not then be able to resist the impetuosity of their intrusion nor put a stoppage to their entering in at all whatever regions domiciles or mansions of the spangled firmament they shall have any mind to cease to stay and to travel through for their recreation all the celestial signs together with the constellations of the fixed stars will jointly be at their devotion then some will take up their lodging at the ram some at the bull and others at the twins some at the crab some at the lion in and others at the sign of the virgin some at the balance others at the scorpion and others will be quartered at the archer some will be harboured at the goat some at the water pours sign some at the fishes some will lie at the crown some at the harp some at the golden eagle and the dolphin some at the flying horse some at the ship some at the great some at the little bear and so throughout the glistening hostelries of the whole twinkling asteristic welcome there will be sojourners come from the earth who longing after the taste of the sweet cream of their own skimming off from the best milk of all the dairy of the galaxy will set themselves at table down with us drink of our nectar and ambrosia and take to their own beds at night for wives and concubines our fairest goddesses the only means whereby they can be deified a hanto hereupon being convocated the better to consult upon the manner of obviating a so dreadful danger jove 
sitting in his presidential throne asked the votes of all the other gods which after a profound deliberation amongst themselves on all contingencies they freely gave at last and then resolved unanimously to withstand the shocks of all whatsoever sublunary assaults End of chapter three fifty one chapter three fifty two of gargantua and pantagruel book three by francois rabelais this librivox recording is in the public domain how a certain kind of pantagruelian is of that nature that the fire is not able to consume it i have already related to you great and admirable things but if you might be induced to adventure upon the hazard of believing some other divinity of this sacred pantagruelian i very willingly would tell it you believe it if you will or otherwise believe it not i care not which of them you do they are both alike to me it shall be sufficient for my purpose to have told you the truth and the truth i will tell you but to enter in thereat because it is of a naggy difficult and rugged access this is the question which i ask of you if i had put within this bottle two pints the one of wine and the other of water thoroughly and exactly mingled together how would you unmix them after what manner would you go about to sever them and separate the one liquor from the other in such sort that you render me the water part free from the wine and the wine also pure without the intermixture of one drop of water and both of them in the same measure quantity and taste that i had embottled them or to state the question otherwise if your carmen and mariners entrusted for the provision of your houses with the bringing of a certain considerable number of tons puncheons pipes barrels and hogsheads of graves wine or of the wine of orleans bayonne and miraveau should drink out the half and afterwards with water fill up the other empty halves of the vessels as full as before as the limousins used to do in their carriages by wains and carts of the wines of argentan and saint gaultier after that how would you part the water from the wine and purify them both in such a case i understand you well enough your meaning is that i must do it with an ivy funnel that is written it is true and the verity thereof explored by a thousand experiments you have learned to do this feat before i see it but those that have never known it nor at any time have seen the like would hardly believe that it were possible let us nevertheless proceed but put the case we were now living in the age of scylla marius caesar and other such roman emperors or that we were in the time of our ancient druids whose custom was to burn in calcine the dead bodies of their parents and lords and that you had a mind to drink the ashes or cinders of your wives or fathers in the infused liquor of some good white wine as artemisia drunk the dust and ashes of her husband mausolus or otherwise that you did determine to have them reserved in some fine urn or reliquary pot how would you save the ashes apart and separate them from those other cinders and ashes into which the fuel of the funeral and bustuary fire hath been converted answer if you can by my figgins i believe it will trouble you so to do well i will dispatch and tell you that if you take of this celestial pantagruelian so much as is needful to cover the body of the defunct and after that you shall have enwrapped and bound therein as hard and closely as you can the corpse of the said deceased persons and sewed up the folding sheet with thread of the same stuff throw it into the fire how great or ardent soever it be it matters not a straw the fire through this pantagruelian will burn the body and reduce to ashes the bones thereof and the pantagruelian 
shall be not only not consumed nor burnt but also shall neither lose one atom of the ashes enclosed within it nor receive one atom of the huge bustuary heap of ashes resulting from the blazing conflagration of things combustible laid round about it but shall at last when taken out of the fire be fairer whiter and much cleaner than when you did put it in at first therefore it is called asbeston which is as much to say as incombustible great plenty is to be found thereof in carpasia as likewise in the climate diasianus at very easy rates oh how rare and admirable a thing it is that the fire which devoureth consumeth and destroyeth all such things else should cleanse purge and whiten this sole pantagruelian carpasian asbeston if you mistrust the verity of this relation and demand for further confirmation of my assertion a visible sign as the jews and such incredulous infidels used to do take a fresh egg and orbicularly or rather ovally enfolded within this divine pantagruelian when it is so wrapped up put it in the hot embers of a fire how great or ardent soever it be and having left it there as long as you will you shall at last at your taking it out of the fire find the egg roasted hard and as it were burnt without any alteration change mutation or so much as a calefaction of the sacred pantagruelian for less than a million of pounds sterling modified taken down and immoderated to the twelfth part of one fourpence halfpenny farthing you are able to put it to a trial and make proof thereof do not think to overmatch me here by paragoning with it in the way of a more eminent comparison the salamander that is a fib for albeit a little ordinary fire such as is used in dining-rooms and chambers gladden cheer up exhilarate and quicken it yet may i warrantably enough assure that in the flaming fire of a furnace it will like any other animated creature be quickly suffocated choked consumed and destroyed we have seen the experiment thereof and galen many ages ago hath clearly demonstrated and confirmed it lib three de temperamentis and dioscorides maintaineth the same doctrine lib two do not hear instance in competition with this sacred herb the feather alum or the wooden tower of piraeus which lucius scylla was never able to get burnt for that archelaus governor of the town for mithridates king of pontus had plastered it all over on the outside with the said alum nor would i have you to compare therewith the herb which alexander cornelius called eonum and said that it had some resemblance with that oak which bears the mistletoe and that it could neither be consumed nor receive any manner of prejudice by fire nor by water no more than the mistletoe of which was built said he the so renowned ship argos search where you please for those that will believe it i in that point desire to be excused neither would i wish you to parallel therewith although i cannot deny but that it is of a very marvellous nature that sort of tree which groweth alongst the mountains of bryanson and ambram which produceth out of his root the good agaric from his body it yieldeth unto us a so excellent rosin that galen hath been bold to equal it to the turpentine upon the delicate leaves thereof it retaineth for our use that sweet heavenly honey which is called the manna and although it be of a gummy oily fat and greasy substance it is notwithstanding unconsumable by any fire it is in greek and latin called larix the apennines name is melza the antonorides and venetians term it larigia which gave occasion to that castle in piedmont to receive the denomination of larignum by putting julius caesar to a stand at his return from amongst the gauls julius caesar commanded all the yeomen boars hinds and other inhabitants in near unto and about the alps and piedmont to bring all manner of victuals and provision for an army to those places which on the military road he had appointed to receive them for the use of his 
marching soldiery to which ordinance all of them were obedient save only those as were within the garrison of larignum who trusting in the natural strength of the place would not pay their contribution the emperor proposing to chastise them for their refusal caused his whole army to march straight towards that castle before the gate whereof was erected a tower built of huge big spars and rafters of the large tree fast bound together with pins and pegs of the same wood and interchangeably laid on one another after the fashion of a pile or stack of timber set up in the fabric thereof to such an apt and convenient height that from the parapet above the portcullis they thought with stones and levers to beat off and drive away such as should approach thereto when caesar had understood that the chief defence of those within the castle did consist in stones and clubs and that it was not an easy matter to sling hurl dart throw or cast them so far as to hinder the approaches he forthwith commanded his men to throw great store of bavins faggots and fascinas round about the castle and when they had made the heap of a competent height to put them all in a fair fire which was thereupon incontinently done the fire put amidst the faggots was so great and so high that it covered the whole castle that they might well imagine the tower would thereby be altogether burnt to dust and demolished nevertheless contrary to all their hopes and expectations when the flame ceased and that the faggots were quite burnt and consumed the tower appeared as whole sound and entire as ever caesar after a serious consideration had thereof commanded a compass to be taken without the distance of a stone cast from the castle round about it there with ditches and entrenchments to form a blockade which when the larignans understood they rendered themselves upon terms and then by a relation from them it was that caesar learned the admirable nature and virtue of this wood which of itself produceth neither fire flame nor coal and would therefore in regard of that rare quality of incombustibility have been admitted into this rank and degree of a true pantagruelianol plant and that so much the rather for that pantagruel directed that all the gates doors angi ports windows gutters fretest and embowed ceilings cans cants and other whatsoever wooden furniture in the abbey of feline should be all materiated of this kind of timber he likewise caused to cover therewith the stern stems cook-rooms relapse hatches decks courses bends and walls of his carricks ships galleons galleys brigantines foists frigates careers barks floats pinks pinnaces hoys catches capers and other vessels of his thessalian arsenal were it not that the wood or timber of the large tree being put within a large and ample furnace full of huge vehemently flaming fire proceeding from the fuel of other sorts and kinds of wood cometh at last to be corrupted consumed dissipated and destroyed as are stones in a lime kiln but this pantagruelian asbestum is rather by the fire renewed and cleansed than by the flames thereof consumed or changed therefore arabians indians sabians sing not in hymns and iopians your incense myrrh or ebony come here nobler plant to see and carry home at any rate some seed that you may propagate if in your soil it takes to heaven a thousand thousand thanks be given and say with france it goodly goes where the pantagruelian grows in of chapter three fifty two End of Gargantua and Pantagruel, Book Three, by Francois Rabelais, translated by Thomas Ucart and Peter Motteau.